Okay, so if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in or are currently studying Japanese. Cool, so we know that you're either A, a weeb, or B. Yeah, okay, you're a weeb. If you look basically anywhere on the internet for advice on how to learn Japanese, you're basically just, how should I say this politely, given the most god-awful advice possible. Like seriously, how does this have 21 million views? Million, yes, you heard correctly. Like what? Okay, so I might be being just a little bit hyperbolic, but seriously, if you look for advice on YouTube, Reddit, TikTok, Twitter, MySpace, LinkedIn, I don't know, basically anywhere on the internet where you're gonna find advice on how to learn Japanese, it's mostly just gonna be extremely unhelpful stuff. I often get asked, how did you learn Japanese? Or how did you get good at Japanese so fast? And I usually just say something along the lines of, oh, I watched a lot of anime, or yeah, I listened to Japanese talk shows all day, or something like that. When I'm genuinely asked for advice, I wish I just had an all-encompassing video detailing exactly what to do to learn Japanese so that I didn't have to sit down and explain every little detail over and over and over again to people who, let's be honest, are probably gonna quit after three days. And then I thought to myself, hold I'm on. I'm watching this video because it was showed up in my timeline video. because I was probably and looking at anime video. content, guys. So, to give a brief introduction to who I am, hi, I'm Trenton. I'm a random white guy from America who, for some reason, thought, huh, I bet learning Chinese would be fun. And then I discovered anime when I was 16 years old, and yeah, the rest is kind of history. Honestly, you guys are probably the same as me, so I'm sure you understand. I can never tell if these people who make these videos can actually speak Japanese or not, because they always just speak to you in English. I went to Japan and immersed myself in the Japanese culture. I went to Akihabara. I went to maid cafes. I went to, okay, no, I didn't actually go to Japan to learn Japanese. But that's what most people think when you tell them the word immersion. Actually, I learned Japanese entirely in America. That's right, guys. All you need to do to learn Japanese is stay in America and watch fucking anime. Japanese without being in Japan. That's, that's all you're going to need to do. Now, let me tell you about this crazy invention that they made like 20 years ago. It's called the Internet. Okay, so now things are starting to click, right? Okay, so that's the entire point of this method, is essentially that you just pretend that you're in Japan by constantly listening to, watching, and reading Japanese. This is also how I pretend to have a girlfriend, by the way. Relatively popular in Instead of actually talking to women, I just pretend that I'm talking to a woman. That's why I have a perfect dark elf stepsister girlfriend that I'm drawing right now. So if you've spent any time in Japanese learning spheres on the internet, then you've probably at least heard of this guy named Matt vs. Japan. You could probably say that he's the most influential person in making this method popular to people on YouTube, and a lot of what I'm going to talk about in this video involves principles which I first learned through his channel. Okay, so first there's some basics that we need to discuss. If you're going to take anything away from this video, it should just be what I'm going to talk about here. Bait Destiny okay, right now. Who the fuck is Destiny? Basic phrases for your trip oh, I've seen Jake. And I, only, I was subbed to his Twitch no channel because he like walks around in the now. city. If so I was enjoying city walking phrases, videos. But then I found there was better city walking videos on YouTube. Tanaka-san, eat tanky desnay, and then the Japanese will be like, Oh my god, you're so good at Japanese, what? And then you can feel good about yourself. Nothing wrong with that, just to be clear. Now, because they're literally everywhere on YouTube, I'm sure you've seen them. How I learned to literally speak any Japanese in 24 language in 24 hours, LMAO. Fucking LMAO. I can't handle this shit. It's too fucking stupid. Oh my god. I'm like the worst person to actually ask if you want to know how to learn Japanese because I went to Japan when I was like five or six or so. And I just uh, didn't speak anything for like six months. And then I still suddenly started speaking Japanese just by being in Japan. So I've never ever opened a book or uh, properly studied grammar or anything like that. So I have no idea how difficult it is for a non-native speaker to learn how to speak Japanese. All I can say is that every person that I've uh, known that isn't like, doesn't have like a PhD in Japanese mythology or some shit like that. Uh, if they're not some Japanese person who was in Canada and came back to Japan, they uh, they can't speak Japanese or English. There's uh, there's very very few bilingual Japanese and English speakers that I've ever met, and I have circled in those uh, those circles. BB will just tell you to give up. You know, I have no idea how much time it is actually going to take you to how to learn Japanese. 
All I can say for sure is that any YouTuber that says that it's actually not that hard is uh, full of shit. Both drawing and Japanese, the two favorite activities of 13-year-old anime weebs who uh, watch their first episode of Demon Slayer and decide they're going to become a Japanese animator and marry their perfect Japanese waifu and also speak Japanese in Japan. Uh, inevitably, 99.9% .9 of them are going to end in tragedy, so, you know, what can you say? I'll learn a language in one week, one month, six months, even a year, and to be completely honest, those people are just lying straight to your face. Specifically, learning Japanese to any decent level will take you multiple years and thousands of hours of effort, and there's just literally no way around it. You're not going to get good at Japanese in a matter of one or two years, assuming you're a native English speaker, and even if you make it your what? entire life, you're still looking at a very, very long time. So basically, I'm just saying, understand that you're here for the long run. Okay, so the second thing we need to talk about is the distinction between acquisition and learning. A lot of people think of language acquisition as being this black and white thing where children acquire a language naturally and adults have to learn it consciously and... You need to fucking so understand that the first so five years of a human are the most important in the development. If your parents didn't force you to draw, learn another language or whatever the fuck is that you want now, you'll have to overcome the extreme hurdle of boredom. If the parent, your parents had to force you to draw, then you were never going to make it in the first place. If you don't have some sort of childlike wonder and enjoyment of drawing, then you probably shouldn't be thinking about wanting to draw later in life anyways. Consciously about grammatical forms and just lets their brain pattern recognize through tens of thousands of hours of input. So basically what I'm trying to say is input is the single most important thing in language learning. Now this isn't to say that... Do we have any Japanese speakers in chat? Other than me, anybody, fellow anime weebs. Uh, at least seven years of study if you want to get to native level, man. I have at least seven years of study, and I went to high or I went to elementary school, high school, and college in Japan, and worked in Japan for a few, like I don't know, about a year or so, as well. And uh, I don't feel like I'm at native level. So, uh, yeah, just. Being able to watch your favorite anime and be like, I understand what's going on in the anime does not put you at native level as a grown adult in Japan, unfortunately. There's all these other layers of nuance that you have to be aware of. On the other hand, if you look like a white person, they won't expect you to be able to understand that shit anyways because you're stupid fucking gaijin to begin with, so it won't really matter. They'll just be like, oh, you're so good at Japanese, ne? Sugoi! Mr. Smith-san, your Japanese is so good. Please impregnate me so we can have half babies. This will happen within a few months of you uh, arriving at Tokyo, don't worry. Just learned the superior language, German. Now German, that's an easy fucking language to learn as someone who took three months of it in high school. Half of German basically just sounds like English. Was ist das? It's literally just, what is that? Same shit. To put it simply, if you can't read the newspaper, you're cooked in terms of Japanese proficiency. You having a gaijin accent is the least of your worries. Yeah, okay. As someone who is who considers myself to be a native English speaker, let's uh, let's open up like a Japanese newspaper and see how many times I run into a character I can't fucking read because it's going to be a lot. Asahi Shimbun.
Alright, this is a pretty simple one. Asahi Shinbun. Minami Arupusu de Akaishi Dake. Probably Dake. This is the uh, the term for a mountain. De Sonan. Taorete ita danse futari shibo katsuraku ka. So in Shizuoka Prefecture, Shizuoka ken no Minami Arupusu Akaishi Dake de.登山者と見られる男性2人がそれぞれ別の場所で倒れているのが見つかり、17日にヘリで搬送され、死亡が確認された県警、え、静岡中央署によるといずれも滑落したと見られるという16時、16日午前8時15分頃、赤石岳の休
Climbing the mountain is hard, but I don't even want to think about how the fuck you climb back down like a cat having to reverse out of a tree. Yeah. You're like, I made it! I did it! I accomplished it! I've got into the top! And now it's like, oh, now I have to go down. And uh, the sun's going down too, and it's gonna be dark soon. Oh no, I've made a horrible mistake, and then you just die from hypothermia or something on the way back. Common mountaineering issue, obviously. Mountain climber, don't die on the way back challenge. Very difficult. We have cryptids. Yeah, but I don't want to marry them. I know there's some people who are like, I want to fuck the chupacabra, but I'm not one of them, you know? I want the big titty Japanese monster mountain goddess fox spirit. Unfortunately, I missed my peak, which would be when I was like six years old and getting bullied at school. So then I run into the local mountain in the Japanese countryside where there's an old derelict Inari shrine and I'm crying alone on the stone steps. And then a, uh, a busty female in a Miko outfit shows up from nowhere and it's like, little boy, what's wrong? And then of course straight Shota sex happens. And then I get told later by one of my elderly relatives that that's uh, the, the fox shrine spirit that likes fucking young boys. Unfortunately I missed my, uh, my opportunity for this to happen so I'm cursed to be a virgin for the rest of my life. Sad. If that, if that had happened when I was still young, now then I would have had an option of uh, her sh showing up again and later in my life when I'm feeling sad as an adult. And I can be like, what? That wasn't a dream? The fox shrine maiden was real and now she wants to marry me? Who the fuck starts a climb at 8 a.m.? You should have started going up the thing by 5, 6 a.m. Yeah, a lot of people, well, you know... Getting out of bed sucks, boys. Oh, by the way, i just like to say, hot take of the stream. Everyone who's uh, climbing Everest right now are a bunch of fucking uh, poser cucks. You're just a bunch of fucking tourists. Stop it. Everybody is trying to climb Everest. You're all dying because there's a giant uh, row of people trying to get to the top. You have 90% of the work be done by the Sherpas, which you pay shit-ass wages to carry your shit up the mountain. You guys are a bunch of fucking posers. Stop using oxygen. Go and, like, just run a marathon in your local city. Stop wasting everyone's money. Stop dumping all of your uh, oxygen tanks on the mountain. Stop shitting on the mountain. Stop dying on the mountain. No one's Im fucking impressed. We all know that you can you climbed Everest. That's great, honey. The Sherpas are the real athletes. Yeah, if the Sherpa actually wanted to climb the mountain while you're lugging your weak-ass white boy, you know, pitiful legs up the mountain, the Sherpas could just run up and down the mountain right beside you, carrying all your luggage. In fact, that's how they do everything. No one's fucking impressed. Also, they do the easy Everest route and not the hard one. Sherpa is unsung heroes. Yeah, they're getting paid like $30,000 a year. Which is like five times the amount of money they would get paid if they were doing anything else in the region, so... Even if I give this hot take that white people should stop going to Nepal, they, uh, they're like, no, 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 please come. We need you to give us money. It's just one of those things where it's like, you think that you're, it's really impressive, but uh, there's other things that you can do that's impressive. Like, I'd be more impressed if you were like, I was uh, on a public transportation, I was on a crowded train the other day, and I really wanted to shit, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna shit my pants and see if anyone notices. I just let it rip. I'd be like, damn, that's a real man move right there. You were, that's really impressive, dude.
For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, look at this shit, bro. This famous fucking photo. It's literally fucking Disneyland, guys. You're waiting on the side of the mountain so you can get to the little bit at the top, you know? Look, guys! I'm at the top of the world! Oh! Everyone behind me, it's like 500 people waiting in fucking line so they can take a fucking photo. Just go to Disneyland, you cucks. I would assume that's Photoshop, Keck W. There's tons of photos of this shit. It's so fucking pathetic. Find something else to do. Look at this shit. Hey guys, look. I've accomplished something that nobody else can do. Just me and the 10 million other people who are waiting to summit. Fuck off. The price of a fucking selfie? Just go like 80% of the way and just say you went to the top. Nobody fucking cares. You're just doing it for self-satisfaction anyways. No one's gonna call you out for not actually getting to the summit, guys. Nobody fucking cares. Like tourists at the Great Wall of China? Exactly. Just go to Disneyland at this point. Although I hear Disneyland is also equally difficult to get into. It's like $5,000 for a night. Stop going to Antarctica, stop going to the Titanic wreck, and stop going to Everest. No, no, we have to we have to encourage the uh, the billionaires to keep on going to the Titanic and to use their own specialty submarines so they kill themselves. It's the only way that we can guarantee that the billionaires are going to die. We have to still do it. The problem with Everest is that you don't have to be a billionaire to do it. You can just uh, pay $60,000. Although I guess there's a lot of rich people who pay the billionaires a few hundred thousand or whatever to go down in the submersible or something. If you badmouth Disney, they'll send Hitman after you. Please, Disney-san, don't fuck me in the ass. I already talked about uh, the guy signing up for Disney Plus trial and then not being able to uh, sue Disney in the previous stream. But yeah... Every once in a while, we have all these Disney adults who forget that Disney is fucking evil. And then there's something comes out that uh, is there to remind them that, yes, Disney is in fact a fucking massive corporation. It's evil as hell. And you shouldn't think it's your best friend. But they never learn, do they? Disney is an overpriced amusement park with long ass lines. As someone who wants to get on the fucking roller coasters, I would just go to like some whatever Six Flags that's close by so I can ride the, actually ride the shit. I don't need to go to fucking Disneyland. Disney had its own little government. I like how uh, the whole infrastructure between the Republican Party supporting corporations whenever under every circumstance has now kind of fallen apart now that corporations have become way more culturally liberal than the Republican Party so now we have the Republican Party trying to fuck over Disney and stuff like that I found it extremely amusing to watch the Florida local government versus Disney fight number one because whoever wins or loses it's a total win for me because fuck both of them. For real. Disney shouldn't have their own, like, local government and bylaws and tax exemptions. And, uh, if the local Florida city government gets way less tax revenue because they're pissing off Disney, fuck them too. My mother being the good liberal that she was, she was like, oh, I'm rooting for Disney now. I'm like, why are you rooting for Disney, mom? They're a massive giga corporation. Just because the Republicans are having a little fight with them doesn't make them good. Sometimes both parties are evil. Just gonna throw that out there, mom. You don't, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You don't have to do what Rachel Maddow tells you to do. She can't even vote, by the way.
it's funny because it won't work now because they made the corporation so powerful. I mean, the Republican Party can think that they're going to fight up, fight against their corporate overlords, but as soon as they have to run an election and they want the lobbying, the money, they're going to, you know, they're definitely not going to increase the corporate tax rate, that's for sure. Last month, a Twitch viewer add-on was interested with my comic. The good news, he, she likes my characters and concept, but the bad news, my artwork doesn't reflect it. He, she suggests me to find an artist to make a comic. Yes, you go and do that. Surely you're not saying I'm the one who's going to do it for you, so... Gotta get on their knees and gargle those mouse balls once an election season hits. They're doing it right now, boys. I think that most American corporations uh, donate money to both both parties, right? Because they want to make sure that they have their bought-out politicians, whether they win or lose. Gotta make sure you get your maximum tax relief at all times. If you hate America so much, why don't you move to Nippon and reunite with your childhood friend? She's waiting for you guys. Remember back when we were both six and uh, we were watching the fireworks after the summer festival, sitting on the stone step steps of the local shrine and she was like, hey Baka. I know because uh, you're a loser, you're never going to find a girlfriend, you'll never get married. I'm not like you, but uh, just in case, if we were both 30 years old and we become adults and we don't have a significant other, let's make a pact that will just get married as a safety option. Remember when she said that, chat? I forgot about it, but that definitely happened. It's time for me to go back to Japan and be like, eh, you're still single too? But ba ba baka I don't remember my childhood friend being this tsundere. Man, I wish uh, real life women were as easy to understand as fucking tsundere in anime. It would make my life as an Asperger much easier. In the real world, people are not as obvious and easy to read. They're not like, b -b 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 -baka. it's not like I l -l -l like you or any th -th -th thing. I just made you a bento because uh, I had a lot of extra food in the refrigerator. And then the MC, who is denser than any any autism spectrum individual, is like, oh! Well, that's a, that's a great coincidence. Good thing she had that extra food. There's no way she was up to, from 5 a.m. making this bento f to, for me because she loves me. She's just my childhood friend. And like her, all of her fingers are fucking covered in tape because she doesn't know how to cook. And she's cut herself like 10 million times cooking the fucking bento. Huh, I wonder how that happened. She's so clumsy, haha. -ha. People are complex as fuck. Yeah. Also, you have a lot of laws that are like, uh, if you misread them, you're going to get tried for molestation and sexual assault. So it's a fucking minefield for people on the autism spectrum out there. I hope you live long enough to get the hologram AI waifu of your dreams. Sure. I was just thinking, do I want a hologram AI waifu? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I probably do. The good thing about hologram AI waifu is that she wouldn't have any body heat. So when the summer is going to be an average of 45 degrees Celsius every day, 
in Tokyo in the year 2080. Her, uh, her lack of body heat will make her much more bearable. I dig your elf character, dark elf character. Also the line work in this is uh, incomplete. I've been extremely unproductive these past 48 hours. I just can't get myself going. She's still gonna nag all the time. I'm gonna bully the shit out of my holographic AI waifu. I'm gonna be so fucking mean to her. I'm gonna be like, bitch, did you get fat? Even though she looks exactly the same because it's the same model. That will teach her a lesson. Maybe you should stop eating all that virtual food in the metaverse. You can beat the shit out of your hologram waifu because she doesn't have human rights. Also because uh, she's made out of a hologram, my punches will just go through her. If she truly loves me, she'll uh, pretend to be a battered woman to make me feel better about myself, even though she's uh, just altering her graphic state. She'll be like, ha ha, I, I must have tripped. And she'll have like a black eye or something. And I'd be like, yeah, that's right, bitch. But uh, I know that deep down she's not hurt at all because she doesn't have a physical body. The perfect woman for me. Hollow girlfriend will just delete herself. She's not allowed to. I say she's not allowed to, but uh... This is the year 2080 or whatever, so corporations will probably have, like, some stupid, like, uh, clause inside the contract where they can take away your property whenever they want to. And they'll be like, oh, you, uh, you met, you violated the end user license agreement. We're just going to take your hologram waifu away. We've noticed that we're, you are using a streaming service besides Disney Plus Plus that violates our contract. You are no longer allowed to use the hologram waifu of your dreams. You will own nothing, boys. Only her feelings will get hurt. And he will wake up one day and instead of her being there, there will be a dear Junichi. Let's be honest. If I actually had a hologram waifu, I wouldn't even bully her. I would just be lazy as fuck. My default mode for other human beings is to just ignore them. Not like directly, like in a bullying way. Just be like, that's great. And uh, go back to my room. The cat was bugging the shit out of me when my mother was in Japan. I thought cats weren't supposed to be needy. But if my hologram wife is going to be... Even half as needy as the cat was, I don't want one. Hollow Girlfriend is such a mindfuck. We're waiting. Where is it? We're all Agent K. Have you watched the new Alien movie? I was thinking about it. What's the rating? Alien Romulus Are you sure you want to do this? It looks good. I'll give it that at least. Let's watch an ad. There she is. You want to break anything and steal highly regulated equipment. Oh, it has a fucking this girl. Could be the only take her out of here. Should be in and out in 30 minutes. I don't know. I'm not feeling it already. I mean, if all of these people die in horribly graphic ways, I guess it makes it slightly better. I am kind of in the mood for sci fi right now. That is true.
But I don't like watching things in the theater anymore. I think I'd rather just watch it at home. Oh, it's the Evil Dead director. I did like the Evil Dead remake. I don't know. It might be okay. I just can't be bothered to go out to... Where is the alien? Don't worry, it'll show up later in the... Do you actually want to see the fucking alien in the, the trailer, dude? Come on, man. The trailers already show more than enough. Looks good. The graphics are good enough. The atmosphere is good enough. That's really the only thing that is important in my space horror, right? Comfy, uh, spooky sci-fi. Darkened corridors. Metaphors for impregnation. You know, the good stuff. The reason why we all go to the movies. Crush his balls. Everyone being mean because someone said they want to see the, the the alien in the trailer, LMAO. Sounds cozy, I know, right? I just want to see people get their heads ripped off in the infinite darkness of space, you know? They should make, uh, Event Horizon 2. How about that, boys? We all like the 90s. We should get an Inve Event Horizon sequel. We need more movies about going deep into space and finding hell. Of course, Estrixia is all up for it. Her being Lawrence Fishburne pilled and all. I think we need to be exploring more technology where we're like, we're gonna need to open a gate to hell to get this to work. But don't worry, it's all under control. Nothing bad will happen. Why aren't we exploring these avenues in real life? Release the full version, you cowards. Wait, is there like an Event Horizon Snyder Cut uncensored or something that they're keeping from us? In which we get like extra gore or something that they were like, this is too hot for theaters. Oh, of course there is. Hystrix is like, no! Please, I need to see... I need to see people's eyes get torn out properly. It did have less gore than I expected it to, considering the setting, you know. It had a bit of gore, but... We could, we could have done with more gore. They literally cut shit out? Yeah. Not every movie can be a Nazi cannibal holocaust. Need more movies about the ocean. Space is massive, but the ocean is still the most unexplored. I mean, I think space is more unexplored than the ocean, but whatever. If we're going at, through all space. Oh, I started watching Passengers, speaking about the massiveness of space. Because uh, it was on Amazon Prime. This is the Chris Pratt, Jennifer, what's her name? Jennifer Evans. Katniss Everdeen, uh, Sony sci-fi vehicle. It has an interesting premise, which is, what if you're trapped in infinite corporate hellhole in space? Which, uh, seems pretty relevant in the year 2024. Unfortunately, uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer, what's-her-name, have really shitty chemistry 
So when he woke her up and they're now they're on the same boat together, I'm not no longer interested. Rings a bell. The the first 30 minutes or so are okay, where it's just Chris Pratt stuck in a gigantic ship with nothing but uh, basically the equivalent of corporate automated phone services to keep him company, and he starts to go insane. But uh, it made me really think about how I don't particularly like the actress. What's her name? Jennifer Evans? I can't remember. Jennifer... I keep on thinking Aniston. Oh, Lawrence. Why am I thinking Evans? I keep on thinking Jennifer Aniston, which dates myself. But yeah, Lawrence. I don't understand why she's always considered to be, like, one of the greatest actresses of her generation or something. It's not like she's a bad actress. I just don't feel the Hollywood, you know, the star power, which I'm supposed to feel. It's a shame they cut Event Horizon footage and later lost the cut part. What is it about these fucking, uh, studios? Or video game companies or something, or publishers as a whole. You have, like, literally one job, and it's to maintain the fucking things you produce. And yet they keep on losing their shit all the time. Like, they, they just, they're just like, oh... We lost all of your, uh, your manga original pages. I don't know how that happened. Sorry, teehee. Like, this has happened multiple times before. I don't know, I just find- I don't find Jennifer Lawrence that attractive. I'm not sure why. She-Hulk actress is the greatest actress in history. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. All I know is that people, the YouTube commentators had, they got like a solid three weeks of content out of She-Hulk. I think this era of Hollywood will definitely be remembered for uh, it's having a relatively good number of attractive male actors who are relatively likable and having a very large number of female actresses who are absolute assholes and behave extremely unprofessionally and uh, a lot of people have learned to hate. Basically everybody who's part of the Disney pipeline of feminist, uh, Mary Sue's. Hollywood already milking up from superheroes to anime? Of course they are. Speaking about Passengers, uh, it starts with Chris Pratt coming out of his, uh, hibernation sleep, and he goes and takes a shower, and they make sure to give you a nice, thick ass shot of him. Chris Pratt Passenger's Ass Shot. Here we go, boys. What? Why aren't they showing the fuck? Is that like a separate image? Why is it getting cut off? Anyways, uh, they give you the full, uh, the full crack right there. Chris Pratt butt doesn't interest me. I was just think it was just like one of those moments where it's like, oh, come on, guys. Are we all, like, make the male gaze is so evil, but we're gonna make sure that we give, uh, women and homosexual men this, uh, nice fat Chris Pratt ass? Come on, guys. What are we doing here? 
the double standard is painful. Because it's Chris Pratt. Among all the, the four Hollywood Chris's, I think I like Chris Pratt the most, honestly. Hystrixia, if you have to choose between the four Hollywood Chris options, which one do you have which one are you going with? I got here at Chris Pratt ass, what's going on? You should know by now that anytime you tune into this stream, you might have some sort of homosexual content going on at any time. That's just the way things are. It's the natural state of the stream. Chris Pratt as Link in the Zelda movie. Is Chris Pratt will be playing Mario. He's so cool. So there's Pratt and Hemsworth. Who's the third Chris? There's four. Chris Evans, Chris Pratt, Chris Hemsworth, and uh, Chris Pine. Those are your four options. So it's Thor, Captain America, Star-Lord, and uh, Captain Kirk. And Christopher Nolan, if you want to go director. But Christopher's are inherently different from Chris, so he's not included. Chris Evans is fucking Captain America, dude. And Snowpiercer. It's fucking Captain America! Guardians of the Galaxy and its consequences. Guardians of the Galaxy is when Disney really came to the conclusion that we can have funny, wacky characters and have them be likable by being lovable losers and stuff. And it was emulated to death by other Disney movies and other Marvel franchises. And uh, we haven't had anything serious since then. Not that I really enjoyed the uh, Zack Snyder Everything has to be serious and dark all the time either. That stuff was awful. Man of Steel was fucking horrible. Likeable losers used to be so unique, let's be real. Yeah, and then uh, then people were like... Every, every single scene has to have... Not people. The Disney writers were like, every single scene has to have like a cool joke and then it has to have in the middle of the movie, a scene where everybody affirms how much they like each other as friends and family, as a surrogate family. But no romance, though. It's just like the 90s and 80s, honestly. Like, the 90s and 80s, if you were alive then, the movies had the same kind of pattern. Like, you could tell the producer would go into a movie during the, the 80s, especially, where they're like, okay, this movie is good, but we have to make sure that uh, we get a scene where the love interest and the main character make out like three quarters of the way through the movie that's a must oh and at the end after he's killed all the bad guys henchmen they have to both drop their weapons and have a hand-to-hand -hand combat scene on the top of a bridge like it was just a huge checklist in terms of how they would make movies and uh thanks to disney every company is doing the same shit I just want the Raimi Spider-Man movies back. Those had real charm, charm, not just witty banter. They had real charm because it was Raimi making them himself, right? You need to have strong individualistic tendencies of the director showing up in the movie for it to be more than just witty banter. Hey, what's up? On the other hand, I still probably enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy 3 if I actually go and watch it. I enjoyed 1 and 2. I didn't go and see 3 because I'm not going to the movie theater anymore. But I probably enjoy it.
I knew that I wasn't going to go to see another Disney Marvel movie ever again when I saw Ant-Man and the Wasp come out and every single background was like shitty purple CGI and I was like, yeah, I can't... I, I'm not going to be in the movie theater for two and a half hours watching purple CGI backgrounds. That's not going to happen. If you can't find a way to at least have some of the movie set in the real world with real locations, then I'm uh, fucking out, you know? The Rock hasn't been in a single good movie ever. It's baffling how he's the most paid actor. Uh, he's been in a f few good movies before he became the most paid actor. In which he wasn't the main character. Is what happened. And then they were like, we have a bad summer blockbuster. Who can prop this piece of shit up? I know. We'll get The Rock. And The Rock's like, good. I don't want to be in a good movie. I want to make money. And uh, the rest is history. Name one good movie with The Rock. The Rundown. Walking Tall. Scorpion King. Let's fucking go, boys. Scorpion King, let's go. Doom. I tried watching Doom. It was fucking awful. Jesus Christ. Also, The, the Rock is like... He's the size of a normal human being in that movie. It's so disjarring. Or jarring, I guess is the correct word, not disjarring. That would be like the opposite of jarring. He's like actually the size of a normal human being instead of like a gigantic roided out muscle man. He doesn't look like an action figure. He looks like a person and it's just, it freaks me out. He hasn't looked like that in many, many years. I bet if The Rock sees Doom now he's like, I promise to myself I'll never look like a normal human again on this day. Yeah, people are getting Vin Diesel and The Rock confused in chat, LMAO. I'm sure both would be pissed off if you did that in front of them. You would somehow offend both Vin Diesel and The Rock. Doom is so fucking cringe. Yes. There could be a good Doom movie and it would just be first person perspective and Doom guy just murdering shit for two and a half hours non-stop. Just like the entire camera would be covered in blood. Every single second of the movie would just be endless amounts of gore and violence. And there wouldn't be a single... Uh, line of dialogue besides the uh the corporate announcers on the the mars base being like we have a level five demon threat being released into the facility and shit like that it would just be like screams and ripping and tearing you know what's the best video game movie it's not a video game movie it's a uh, hardcore harry or hardcore henry i believe you guys know what I'm talking about? I believe it's a Russian movie. But it's shot entirely in first person from like a GoPro camera. It's like ultra violence. Well, not even that ultra viol viol violence, but uh... Yes, yeah, that's a fun one. It actually feels like you're in a video game. It's just like, let's go! Just run around. This is uh, this is what 90% of Russia looks like nowadays, by the way. Right, I counted six vehicles. That's at least 35 men. You've got to cut them down to half that before they enter. This is, it's a movie for people who played 10 million hours of Call of Duty and were like, you know what, I need more. In my movies, more Call of Duty. Let's fucking go, violence! Holy shit, I love shooting shit. I love violence. Let's go! Blood, death, K. 
Kill! Kill! Yes! Yes! Kill! Murder! Murder! Headshot! Feels good, man. It's like two hours of that shit. Won't you get DMCA'd for this? I don't know. If the... The seven minute video of YouTube isn't getting DMCA'd, it's not my problem. I don't think you're gonna get DMCA'd for like two minutes of showing something. On a related note, there was a Jason Stratum flick mechanic where he has to have sex at all times to survive. Was that the mechanic? Wasn't that like non-stop or something? Has he had multiple movies where he has to be doing shit non-stop to survive? Or are you just getting the titles mixed up? Why the fuck would a guy with a ghillie suit on top of a building the moment they should shoot their heads a proficient shooter would have to blow their heads into red mist? I mean, they are, they're surrounded by uh, forest, so I assume that... I believe he was wearing the ghillie suit before they got onto the building and... He hasn't had time to take it off. I can't remember specifically. It doesn't really matter, by the way. The guy is like, uh, he has an infinite number of lives because he has all of these clones that he uses. Spoilers. Crank and crank too high voltage. Yeah, that's right. You have to, Jason. Your heart's gonna stop if you don't be doing, getting adrenaline at all times. You have to have sex. No, not the sex at all, please. do this kind of hair, which is bad because I have two characters with this hair. I want the hairline to be a little farther down is what I'm adjusting right now. Crank in 2024 would not work, sadly. I mean, we just had the Beekeeper. I didn't watch it even though it was on Amazon Prime. Is it really that different from Crank? I feel like every Jason Stratum movie is basically the same kind of action, isn't it? Beekeeper is like John Wick, but his beehives were killed. An old black woman commits suicide or something because she gets internet scammed within the first five minutes. That's the uh, his dog getting killed moment. I started watching the movie and I lost interest. I couldn't help the, uh, the part of me that's like, it's her own fucking fault for uh, getting scammed. I know that's the wrong uh, reaction that you're supposed to have toward seeing an elderly woman get scammed, but unfortunately it was enough for me to turn off the movie. Hey, Sea Monkey, thanks for the Prime sub. I appreciate the support. <laughs> Vitligo Elf, yes. We're, uh, we're properly up to date with uh, current SJW racial trends. She's gonna be full brown, though. Actually, she's not brown. We don't know what color she is. 
if we have a gray dark elf, she could either be blue, gray, or uh, brown, depending on the flavor of dark elf you like. You're free to think of her in your, your favorite dark elf flavor. I'll leave it up to your own brain. Dark purple. There, I guess there's also purple dark elves. They're not as common as the blue, brown, or gray varieties. When the anime comes, what shade is she gonna be? That's a good question. I would probably ask um, the animators to do color images of all the other characters and then have draw her standing beside them and see the different color options and choose which one looks the best next to the other characters. That's probably what I would do. Because I have more concrete ideas about the hair colors of all the other characters. The main character is blonde, Aubrey is uh, a brunette, etc. But uh, her skin color is vague, vaguely defined. Before John Wick's wife passed away, that dog was her final gift to Wick. What a bunch of horse shit. Like, just don't die from cancer, man. How about that? How do they even scout out people to make anime of their shit? What, you mean amateurs or like actual professional animation studios? I would don't know. I don't have any. If there's one thing that I don't know anything about, it's uh, anything related to finding other people to do stuff for me. Good thing Solus actually has a binder full of voice actors to get shit done for him because, uh, certainly wouldn't happen with me. Ball's Heart of Stone can't understand a plot point. Look, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm just kind of done with the whole, like, you know, we have to have all this window dressing for a reason to have to kill Russians, you know? Do we really have to go through all the mental gymnastics? The truth is, uh, we like our power fantasies. But then we need some sort of reasoning for why we have to, we're allowed or justified to kill people. It's because they're Nazis, or it's because they're demons, or it's because they killed our dog, or killed our wife. But the truth is, we just like killing shit because it makes us feel powerful and cool, let's be honest. But if that was the entire plot of the movie, that would make you into a psychopath. So we have to be like, oh, it's for revenge. Oh, it's because, you know, they're, they're part of the Nazi party. It's always justified if they're Nazis or zombies or demons or aliens. But in reality, we're like, let's fucking go, kill, 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 fun, 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 right? Those Nazis had wife and kids too. When will anybody think about Hitler's children? Ball getting to the root of the matter. I was just thinking about this this morning because, uh... I was thinking about the content that I was writing using novel AI and a bunch of the AI, um, uh, the AI story writing tools that I was messing around with. And all of it is, uh, it's like stories, but all of it has pornographic elements to it. 
And not just pornographic elements. It has uh, my own fucking fetishes, which, uh, based on my waifu being Taimani and Asagi, I think we already know what they are. I was just thinking about, like, how fucking cringe it is if someone was reading my, uh, this novels that I was writing very quickly using novel AI. Like, the level of gratuitousness of, uh, sexual violation and stuff like that that I'm putting in for my main character's self-satisfaction and stuff. But then I started thinking, you know what, that's all of our media, right? We all want to feel powerful. We just, uh, we just sort of bat beat around the bush and not admit it. I want to read it. Yeah, but it's like so fucking cringe, man. It's a good study in terms of what AI is like. How much I... It would be interesting to see if you can detect which parts the AI is writing and which parts I'm writing. But I do. I have like, I don't know, 20,000 words in one. I started writing a uh, cyberpunk superhero villain narrative. And uh, it's about a superhero or supervillain that uh, he's just raping a lot. Lots of rape. Just uh, endless amounts of rape. But nothing, nothing serious, you know, just casual rape. Please, fine. I know you have, uh, your mind is much more twisted and horrifying than I am, so I might send it to you. He rapes, but he saves? Not really. See, I was just thinking, the reason why I was thinking it's cringe is because, uh, I want, um, I wanted the, f the fantasy setting in which, um, as a man, male self-insert, you're allowed to explore your desire to feel powerful sexually through sexual assault and rape and all this stuff like that. But then you don't actually have to deal with any of the depressing social elements that come from actual, you know, sexual assault and stuff. So, let's say if you were playing um, Sengoku Dansu or something like that, where the main character is supposed to be like a anti-hero, lovable guy who also rapes. Wouldn't it be really depressing if uh, Dansu, uh, he rapes a girl and then like the next day she just uh, hangs herself, right? Or she becomes just like depressed and never leaves her room anymore. And it's just never eats and it just becomes a shell of herself. That's sad. Nobody actually wants that. You have to be a true psychopath to want that kind of like sad things to happen, right? You just want to feel powerful. It's the same as when you watch an action movie. You want to sh shoot people and kill people. But then you don't want to see the scene in which uh, you have to deal with the actions, the consequences of your actions, in which you see all the, the family of the dead person crying over him and be like, maybe I shouldn't have murdered him, right? You want everything to be justified. That's why they like the strong-willed ones? Exactly. You want to have strong-willed, strong female character who needs dick correction, and then you correct her with your dick, and it makes you feel powerful, right? You know, suddenly you feel better about yourself. You've accomplished something. You've conquered a, a uh, obstacle, like uh, a video game, but... You don't want her to uh, be mind broken or feel bad. In fact, you would want uh, the female character like you for doing that, which is why uh, if you're playing Ransu or something like that, after you rape the girls, you can make them into your, your units and stuff like that, right? Redo of Healer, yeah. So Redo of Healer is like full revenge fantasy, right? It combines the, uh, the sexual violence with the, the revenge fantasy of, like, action movies and stuff like that. The cheer was gonna be for the Big Mama Milkers, but I don't know what's going on with the convo. I was talking about the dark truths about wish fulfillment fantasies. Whether it's porn or action movies or Mary Sue self-inserts and stuff like that. 
And you see the same thing for female oriented media like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey and stuff like that. Even when they're supposed to be the subservient character versus the man who's the one who's dominating them. There's always like a scene in which the guy's like, you drive me crazy, you have so much power over me, you don't, you're not aware of this. In other words, in pretty much every single form of media, unless, if, if it's like wish, wish fulfillment media, um, there's like a scene where it's like, it's just, uh, it's about making yourself feel powerful, right? And then in the case of female media, they do that by having emotional control over the men who are powerful men in many cases. But we don't want to admit this shit, which is why, uh, depending on whatever you're using, they might censor rape content or something like that. But it all comes from the same place. People want to do whatever the fuck they want to do to begin with, and then they want people to applaud them for doing it. They don't want to be criticized for just doing whatever the fuck they just did. That's the real truth when it comes to wish fulfillment fantasies. What is it with you women and criminals? It's always true crime and shit. Yeah, my mother watches like 10,000 hours of true crime as well. I don't really don't know. There's a channel that has, um, what is it? Dateline on 24 seven. And whenever she's cooking, she just has it on the background, even though they're repeating murder cases she already knows. How about stories when you are not powerful? Are they just auto-skip for you, BB? I mean, I'm willing to listen or consume media that is uh, not about being powerful, wish-fulfillment fantasies. However, I don't find it particularly enjoyable. That's why... Um, Isekai is so... Isekai is like they took all the extra baggage of these stories like John Wick uh, having to have his dog get killed and stuff before you get to the, the wish fulfillment part and they're like, nah, fuck that. You know what? You're reincarnated. You have infinite lives, infinite amount of power. You get to kill all the people you don't like and then you get to fuck the girls and then they're going to like you for it. It's the most purest form of wish fulfillment fantasy and they don't try and hide it. That's what I respect about it. And when it's good, it's really good. It's just like eating junk food, right? Sure, you should eat your veggies and read Crime and Punishment or something, but do we actually want to eat our veggies? It's once, it's okay once in a while, but I'd rather have my uh, primary food source be McDonald's, you know? Female solidarity with Mama Ball. I mean, I can't really talk shit about my mother consuming Dateline while she's cooking because I have YouTube police interrogation videos on all the time while I'm drawing stuff. So I'm in the same boat as her. It's not just females that watch that stuff. I watch it too. Mental junk food, exactly. Just like Otome is the female equivalent, yes. It is interesting how you had the female wish fulfillment fantasy of Otome being like, I'm just a normal girl, teehee. I'm normal looking. I'm not even that cute, teehee. And now I'm going to this special privileged school full of privileged guys and they're all crazy over me and they all want me. Even though I'm just a normal girl, teehee, you know. That was the, the place where you start from. And it's interesting how you go from the Otome category to the Yaoi category where a certain subsection of women were like, you know what? I don't really care about being in this uh, story. I don't want to self-insert. I just want the guys. I just want to be the woman with the binoculars 500 meters away from the guys looking at the guys gay it up. That's what I enjoy. It's It's... It's a very interesting development, and I can't think of any other parallel besides the Otome to Yaoi pipeline, right? Can you think of anything else similar to that? Where you're like, I prefer when I'm not included in this story, I'd rather be a bystander looking at gay sex. Or even if you take the gay sex element out, 
there was a certain group of people that decided that they prefer to not be the Mary Sue. They'd rather just be a bystander. NTR maybe? See, proper NTR cooming mental gymnastics is actually centered around self-inserting as the, uh, the male character. And being like, no, I can't believe my wife is getting cocked. Oh. You can do that as the main character. You can be the, the cuckolder, and then you can also be a bystander, I guess. But uh, at its core, it's much more focused on the, uh, the main character whose wife is getting cuckolded away from him, I would say. Usually it's some self-insert still. Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, Fujoshi content where there's no females at all. Which is obviously meant for women. Now you can feel female power fantasy by installing Tinder. Yeah. True. It do be like that. Look at all these hot gay guys lusting after each other. Whoa. Real life gay coupling. Whoa. That's so moe. I'm saying they are self inserting as the male MC. You think so? It would be interesting to do a survey of this. I'm not sure they are. They might be. It probably varies from people to people. It would be interesting to do a deep dive on uh, really interrogating the Fujoshi on how they approach their uh, yaoi fantasies and whether uh, they look at themselves as the male MC or not. Oh, speaking about female energy, when I always complain about female energy, uh, I was opening up Shonen Jump Plus the uh, Shonen Jump website today and I was just like oh this is uh, some real female energy we've got going on right here I can explain through uh, step by step what I mean when I say female energy where was it Did I pass it they have Deadpool by the way Deadpool looking good the Deadpool is really actually good I'm impressed today what the fuck mm -hmm. oh here we go so this is a new series that show up and I started reading it and I was like oh this is female energy time I will point out one by one all the things that I was like this makes this female energy a the, uh, well, the drawings are really good. I can't tell. It says Yuba Fumiji. I don't know if this is a male or female author. It might be a male author, but it has intense female energy. A, the lines are very thin. B, immediately the main character group shows up and you have a uh, standard black hair boy glasses soft expression boy and then uh hot-headed like yancha is the japanese word like teasing uh kind of boy immediately everything about this is like this must be a female drawing it like uh the angles in which they draw the men and stuff like that it's, uh, it's basically the female gaze, right? It would be like if I was drawing a, a comic and within the first five seconds I had uh, all these female characters show up with big uh, titties, you know, wearing bikini armor. Oh lord, they have all the flavors. It might be a male author, but if it is, they're, uh, they're fully appealing to the, 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 female, the female gaze right there. And this is still chapter one so I was just like I don't know if I'm out but I'm kind of out 
What's your percentage of this being a female artist? 1 to 100%? I feel like it's 50-50, honestly. I can't say for sure. The pen name sounds masculine, and there's a lot of masculine artists nowadays that understand that they have to appeal to female uh, readers to survive. So I'm, I'm not going to give it, even give it 60%. Thin lines, yes. Women like their thin lines. I predict Secret Wars film will have part one and part two. Have we had a Marvel, like Marvel Marvel, not Ryan Reynolds' Xbox property Disney movie? We haven't had one since, uh, what is it? Was it Ant-Man and the Wasp was the last one? It's been a fucking while, hasn't it? I don't know, man. This, uh, they had to scrap the whole Jonathan Majors angle to begin with. Because, you know, he was doing that little thing about beating women stuff. Just a, just a little bit of women beating. A dash of, of uh, domestic violence. You don't have to be female to do the female-coded art. Dudes can study the arts of homo. They need to make money. And nothing gives you money like uh, female readers, so... The Dungeon Meshi has uh, relatively low female energy. I would say. There's still some, but not much. I might be the only person on the planet who hasn't seen any of the MCU movies. Same with Doro Hedoro. Doro Hedoro has some of the least amount of ma female energy among female authors out there. It's very hard to tell that it would be Doro Hedoro as a female author if you don't know about it. I mean, from day one, you have big titty girls with big tits. Big tits and uh, giant lizard men is not exactly what you expect from female authors. Doro Hedoro is the grungiest manga out there. Hollywood adaptation in 20 years, guys. Let's go. It will be awful. I guess we'll get the horrible Netflix anime first. And everyone will be like, why did they allow that to happen? We already have it, sweetie. Did we? I don't know. I'm not following Netflix. Was there a Dorohedoro anime? Fuck. Uh, what am I looking for? I have to look at my own images because I don't remember what I did with the uh, the shirt design. It's not terrible actually, but not great. Many such cases, unfortunately. That's like the default, isn't it? If you think about it. Oh, I know. I can just go like this. What's the best Netflix adaptation of anime? You can choose from anime and uh, live action. 
if you want to go live action one piece guys or a Japanese video game if you want to go Castlevania one piece is it one piece I have heard a lot of good things about the one piece adaptation Devil man, Debbie Ruman. This is irrelevant to me because I'm not actually going to get a Netflix account, so I'm not going to watch this. Is Dungeon Meshy Netflix? Yeah, so is JoJo Part 6. So is uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Which uh, should be disqualified because it's not animation, because it's not moving, it's not animated. It's a, it's a still image. Kick W. Hey, Alien Hominid. Thanks for the uh, tier one sub to Toasty. I don't understand why the uh, the sound alert went off for this case and when it did, doesn't go off for any other case. I appreciate the support. There's a live action Ultraman movie that's pretty good, not rising. Isn't Ultraman always live action? What the fuck are you talking about? I have something to tell you. Ultraman, when he's running around, that's someone in a suit, bro. That's not animated. I gotta watch that cyberpunk anime because that chick will be in Strive. What? Who? Rebecca? I wasn't- I'm not following any Strive news. Lucy? It says a lot then when- when someone says that chick from Cyberpunk, I immediately think Rebecca instead of Lucy. Shows you how powerful the Loli is. I'm good with fighting game from Street Fighter to Marvel vs. Capcom, but not anime fighting game. I mean, if you can do Marvel vs. Capcom, you can probably handle Under Night in Birth or whatever, right? It's similar energy, I would assume. I mean, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, just uh, float people up with your fucking combo and they never come down until they die. Isn't that the same as Guilty Gear Strive? Rebecca was the right option, but people are too butthurt from gun characters. That's ice crunching, boys. Strive has a whole wall break mechanic that stops infinites. Yeah, that's why it fucking sucks. I've never tried to get good at Guilty Gear, but... I just don't consider Strive to be a real game. If all the old ass... Japanese players like Omito Johnny and stuff like that aren't competing. It means that they've fundamentally changed the mechanics to a point where it's probably not, doesn't really count as strive anymore. That's what I say. You know? It's like the dumbed down version.
As long as he doesn't speak into the mic ASMR style, I am satisfied. What if I just breathe into the mic? Is the reason why you freak out when I do ASMR is because like, does it do the tingly thing to you? Isn't that what people like who like ASMR? Listen to ASMR for that purpose, like they want the tingle up their spine or whatever when people whisper into the mic. I don't really understand the whole mechanic. Yes. Yeah. They're like, oh, please. Mistress, please dom me by crinkling paper near the mic. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tingle. I'm gonna tingle. Oh. Least horny ASMR enjoyer. Don't underestimate that market ball. People got rich off that shit. They really did. I wonder if it's possible to even get into that market anymore. It feels like one of the lowest barrier of entries markets. So if you were a woman that uh, got a bunch of pay piggies that give you money just because you whisper into the microphone, then if you got in early on that shit, boy, you won the lottery. Because I don't know how you'd get a, a audience going forward now. Now that, like, everybody wants to do it. I just, the reason why I think that uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Guilty Gear Xrd are like in the same category is remember how there was a, I forgot the guy's name, but there was a professional Marvel player. Uh, he had a team with um, the demon from Ghosts and Ghouls and uh, Super Scroll, and he had a setup where if uh, you got caught in the setup once your first character died, he would call the Super Scrawl assist, and um, when your character would come in, what, you would 100% get caught in the combo. So basically, if your first character died, he would be able to kill your second and third characters too. Yeah, Firebrand. I think his name was like Matumba Man. No, it wasn't Matumba Man. I can't remember who it was. It was like a vaguely Middle Eastern guy. He was the only one who played the setup, and it didn't have like a great win rate because you would have to win the first character in the first place. But uh, it was just like, this is peak Marvel right here, where you're like, it's not just your first character getting combo to death, it's your second and third characters as well. It was a Merry Christmas machine, yeah. That game is so jank. I would hate it if I was actually playing it myself, but as a spectator, it's pretty funny. Have you seen Zero like at all? He basically does that every game. You mean the uh, the Zero Infinite combo? Yeah, but that's like uh, that's like slightly different because it's just him alone, right? Doing the lightning thing, zip, 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 zip. And even, even Zero wasn't, uh, Zero didn't win an Evo for like five years or something, right? It took forever for uh, a Zero team to win. There's actually quite a bit of variety in terms of the various bullshit. It's one of those examples where if a Kusoge is shitty enough that it all kind of battle, it balances itself out, like Hokuto no Ken, where there's like five or six characters that are broken, so there's actually like some character variety. You know, you, that, that's like the funnest form of video games, where everything is broken, so nothing's broken. Thoughts on new Lance moveset in Monster Hunter? I've, uh, the new Monster Hunter videos coming out have motivated me to get back into playing Monster Hunter Rise and finish up Rise so I can move on to Sunbreak. So that's why I haven't, I've only drawn three hours of pictures today because I was playing Monster Hunter. I'm not going back to Lance, though. I've put a lot of thought into what is the correct weapon to use in Monster Hunter, and I've come to the conclusion that it's Hunting Horn, and I'm never going away from Hunting Horn. Hunting Horn is the right weapon. All the other weapons can suck my cock. See, I've, I've actually analyzed this. about what is the most satisfying components of Monster Hunter gameplay and come to the conclusion that uh, it is Hunting Horn. 
at least for me. Because here's the thing. You can start off by saying, if we're going to go deep into the, the Monster Hunter weapon conversation, and we, we are going to do right now, you can immediately start the weapon conversation by immediately disqualifying uh, any of the ranged weapons. If you use ranged weapons in a Monster Hunter game, good for you, but uh, I'm not going to say fuck off, but... You can do the exact same thing in any other game. There's lots of games that let you shoot weapons, okay? You don't need to fucking play Monster Hunter to shoot their f shitty FPS game with heavy or light bow gun or bow or whatever. That stuff is meaningless. It's redundant. You can play a better shooter instead of playing it in Monster Hunter. Fuck that. No range weapons. I'm not going to use any range weapons. So that's step one. Okay, step two. What's the joy of Monster Hunter? that's different from other games in which you find fight other enemies it's that you're fighting a really big monster right duh the fun part of monster hunter is you're fighting a big monster that has a skeleton that responds to your attacks so you need to have a big weapon that when you hit the monster it reacts so you feel like you're actually actually interacting with the monster so that uh that also disqualifies ticky tack small weapons like sword and shield and dual blades and stuff like that. Insect glaive. Things that have like, you know, applying poison or hitting the monster many, many times. That also disqualifies that shit. You have to go for the big bonk in some way. So what does that leave? That leaves you hammer, great sword, long sword, uh... Charge Blade, uh, Switch Axe, and so on. I think that's I've listed all of the remaining ones. Just by default, I'm not going to fucking play Longsword, right? Yeah, play Longsword and be like every other fucking noob, pathetic noob katana weeb who wants to use the most easy-to-use weapon that also looks cool. Yeah, never going to fucking touch Longsword. I have to be ind an individual. We ain't doing that shit. No. The, uh, the shield weapons. I played Lance to begin with. Lance was my weapon. It feels really good to, uh, block shit and be slow and just poke stuff. But the poking part, uh, lacks the satisfaction of bonking. And there's too many moves on the monster's part that, uh, go through your guard and stuff like that. And it doesn't give you the, uh, the joy of running around as well. So there's also a secondary joy when it comes to defense in which you properly dodge big monster moves and then counter by repositioning. And obviously you can block, but uh, I felt like I was uh, losing out on that with uh, Gun Lance and Lance. So I'm not going to play Lance anymore. We're still going. This, is, this conversation goes on forever. So that only leaves uh, basically Switch Axe, Great Sword hammer and hunting horn i tried playing with the hammer we have a lot of hammer bros out there who are like hammer's the best i can't do hammer it just bugs me that the way that all of the move sets your character looks like they can barely wield the hammer that it it looks too heavy like it's good to have a weight in your weapon but it just looks extremely unyieldly and it it feels unconvincing that your character can uh, lug this thing around and also properly hit the uh, the monster. Also, it bugs me that I can't fucking hit tall monsters with that short-ass hammer. And I don't want to hop onto cliffs and jump off cliffs again and again and again. That's fucking stupid. So again, now that now we're down to great sword and uh, what switch axe. And I played around with both of those quite a bit, but I ultimately came to the conclusion that. Uh, Hunting Horn was the best out of these three options. I did a little bit of uh, great sword, honestly, but the whole sheath and unsheath and the lack of mobility and stuff. See, Hunting Horn has it has the bonk, it has the range, it has all of this extra dynamics to it with uh, the self buffing, and it allows you to be fast and mobile, especially if you have a Hunting Horn that. Uh, imp increases your movement speed. You can run faster than any other weapon if you have the movement speed up buff with Hunting Horn. So it's both the most mobile and the bonkiest of all weapons. Therefore, it's the best weapon. 
For everyone who disagrees with me, you just wouldn't understand because you have no taste. You're a fucking disgusting pleb. Not that I would uh, discourage you or encourage you to play Hunting Horn because I'm one of those people who's like, I, this is my weapon, I don't want anyone else to play it. If anything, I'd be like, yeah, you guys keep on using Longsword. I'm a cool individual hipster. You're, I'm too cool for you to, for you guys to understand. Just allow me to carry you by uh, playing all the stamina, use, decrease buffs that you so badly need. What if, and this might sound insane, you just play what you like instead of calling people disgusting plebs? No. I will most definitely call all of you disgusting plebs. And if you, uh, if you are using Hunting Horn, I will be angry because you're using my weapon. I'll be like, you stupid pleb, stop using my weapon. That's my unique weapon. This is why I play offline, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because I'm solo Hunting Horn anyway, so... Hunting Horn users are always welcome. Buff the whole ass team. There's some Hunting Horn buffs that I'm sure make a huge damage difference. Aren't there, um, when they do, like, the multi-person, like, time trials, doesn't every, uh, time trial team have one hunting horn in it for the extra damage? Or am I thinking, or does it vary depending on the game? I remember looking in one of the, the time trial, like, records and with, like, multiple characters, and I think there was always, like, at least one hunting horn. Unless it's like world where it's just easier to have like 10 heavy bow guns and you just, you know, destroy everything with the spread ammo or whatever the fuck it was. You should have a redeem where you insult the chatter. Yeah. That was the case in Iceborne. Just uh, the heavy bow gun, right? Everybody just... Uh, Spreading, spreading the spread ammo, just unlock the ammo and just uh, dump the magazine. Feels good, man. Yeah, cluster bomb. <laughs> Hunting horn main are kind of rare. Lance is the rarest, I believe. It changes depending on the, um, the game. They buffed the shit out of Hunting Horn and Rise, and I think their use percentage went up a little bit. The Hunting Horn in Monster Hunter Rise is, uh, is like baby's first weapon Hunting Horn, where they removed all the complicated melodies and stuff like that, and it's just really easy to use, but I hope they change it back to World Hunting Horn in uh, Monster Hunter 6. It's a little too simple. It's actually way too simple in Rise. It's, uh, it's very much baby's first hunting horn. I don't mind the, uh, the move set in terms of, like, the actual swings you do, though. I'd be okay if they kept the, uh, the swing move set for Monster Hunter 6, but changed the way the note melodies work and made it more difficult. They completely changed hunting horn and rise. They basically made it so... If you were playing an actual instrument in World and previous versions, now they make it so you just press a button and the melody comes out. It's like the auto synth version of Hunting Horn. It just basically does it automatically for you. It's way easier to play, but also much less satisfying. I fail to see Insect Glaive fans. What is the point of Insect Glaive? Is it just like super high mobility? It does a bunch of healing and shit, right? I never considered playing Insect Glaive because I don't want to have a fucking gigantic beetle on my arm. I'm, I'm not a huge bug fan, so I don't want to have like a massive bug attached to me at all times. Well, I guess it's not attached to you half of the time, it's flying around and shit, but we already have enough bugs that we're using to pull people around in the first place and rise. So I don't need more bugs. How you fuck up a support weapon? The support was, uh... It was too time consuming and they f thought that they... Their, the players would want to be more aggressive. The 
beetles are cool. I don't want a giant beetle attached to me as my weapon, guys. Even if it's somewhat cool. What are you, like the DC marketing department? You're like, no, Blue Beetle is a, Blue Beetle is a classic DC superhero franchise, guys. It's definitely going to be popular if we release a movie about it. Everybody loves Blue Beetle from the, uh, the 40s. Bees and moths could be disgusting, but beetles are cool. No, moths are nice and furry. I like moths more than anything. I would love to have a pet moth. Unfortunately, it's going to die in like two days, so... They don't even have ha uh, mouths most of the time, moths. They just die. For bugs, the uh, the flying form really is their last form. Their last, last dance of glory before they just immediately fucking die. I want a bug attached to me, so when I go outside and jog in the summer, I often don't wear a shirt because it's too fucking hot. And then my entire body is covered in sweat and oil. And what happens is when I get home, it's just like a gigantic graveyard of bugs that attach themselves to my body because I'm running into these clouds of bugs. And then when their body hits my sweaty, sweaty, salty juice just coming out of my body, they just attach themselves to the body and die in the sweat. And there's just hundreds of bug corpses attached to my body when I get home from my run. It's horrific. It's like, oh no, what have I done? They're all dead. It's okay, they only have like a two-day lifespan anyways, but yeah. Hashtag just ball buddy things. I guess you have seen the huge moth manga that makes rounds around Twitter every once in a while. Are you talking about the hentai? Where there's a fluffy moth waifu that you want to have sex with? Because uh, everybody likes that one. I wish there were moths so large that they just blot out the sun. We're like... What is this shadow overhead? Oh no, it's the giant moth. The giant moth is overhead. Oh god. All the moth particles are falling down on us. No. Have you read 100 Girlfriends? I've read a little. It's pretty good. We need the sun? Yeah, but what if the moth wants to sunbathe above us? Giant moth. Giant wood moth. Look at this boy. Heaviest moth in the world. He's a big boy right here. Fluffy big boy. Look at him go. Ah, oh, giant moths all over my hands. Big fluffy friends. I was planning to do a uh, moth waifu manga with the joke being that uh, the moth waifu cheerfully informs the guy that she's going to die in a few days. Because of moth lifespan, Sag. That's good, do it. No, I'm busy drawing this, the, the elf manga. I might do it some point, but you know. I have to draw all this food on the table.
Oh god, I'm so fucking lazy. Oh, I don't want to do anything. I want to play Monster Hunter. Why does it take so much time to do everything? Oh, where are my assistants? Oh. <laughs> Me when I see instant moth girl doujin. I don't like the guy who draws bug waifu doujins where half the time the bug just eats the guy. I don't need to uh, fantasize about women trying to kill me, honestly. I like more wholesome, wholesome fantasies. You mean regular? Yeah, regular. Also, I don't like how thorax e his uh, bug waifus are. Regula puts a little too much effort into the thorax. In other words, what I'm saying is I don't want a bug wife. That's probably what Regula would say to me. He's like, you don't like bug wives at all if you don't like the thorax. And you know what? He's right. I don't wanna I don't want a fucking thorax on my waifu. That's right, I don't wanna fuck the bug. Get fucked the globalists. I will not eat the bugs and I won't have sex with them. I will own what I want to own. And I won't be happy. Regula did a few wholesome bug ones. The moth one is very wholesome. I like uh, Zeton, Zeton, or however you pronounce it, more than Regula when it comes to fucking monsters. I honestly like Zeton's first doujin the most, where uh, it's like a post-apocalyptic world where a guy puts on a scuba suit just so he can dive to the bottom of the ocean and uh, rape octopus girl. He is a man with, uh, the same taste as me. Zeton understands me. I don't know what he's doing right now. I don't think he's published anything recently. He might have moved on to, like, official stuff instead of making doujins, and that might be why, uh, I haven't seen his stuff. Guy makes an entire centaur doujin about male getting, uh, ntr by his uh, stepmother. Oh no, please. Miss uh, Stepmother Centaur, don't fuck me. Oh no. He made a killer whale one, the most recent one at least. He's really one of the, the biggest pioneers of the monster fucker genre. And deserves all the credit for popularizing a lot of it. I will have sex with the bugs. I was watching the TV at Pl on Planet Fitness at like 6 in the morning working out and they were doing like isn't nature great kind of nature programs and they were showing video footage of the peacock spider. It was the male peacock spider doing mating dances. And like a peacock, it has like a brightly colored abdomen that it sticks out and it does like these bizarre mating dances toward females. And then the announcer was like, this male peacock spider has to w try very hard because if the female spider doesn't like his performance, she might eat him. I was just like, man, men have it hard. I thought for the first time in a while we'd see the spider or bug in which it doesn't involve getting eaten if you fail, or even if you do succeed, but no. As soon as being a male bug, and you accomplish your life goal of shooting your seed into a female, it's it's uh, goodbye time. And sometimes even if it's not goodbye time, it's time to get eaten.
The female spider will eat them if she likes them, but it's but's too hungry for sex. Yeah, many such cases. Basically, the default mode is just getting eaten at this point. Fun fact, female praying mantises sometimes start eating their mates, then mate with them. As long as your uh, penis is somewhat functioning, it doesn't matter if your head gets twisted off. As long as you can still coom. There was a uh, um, porn artist that was drawing for a brief period of time despite being good, but he stopped. But he had a really weird fetish of... Uh, he liked... Um, big, strong, muscular men jamming their big, thick cocks inside female warriors, except the female warrior would uh, just twist off the guy's head while he was coming inside them. So, like, full praying mantis energy. It was like, big, strong man, but also uh, your neck is going to get twisted off. Hot. Yeah, I knew you would say that, Hystrixia, of course. I, it's, he's the only person that I've known that really had that fetish that actually produced a lot of content with it. I guess he likes the act of, like, you know, shooting your load while you're also dying. Based, to be honest, God, I wish that was me. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't want that to be me. I'd rather not get my head twisted off while I'm ejaculating. Just gonna throw that out there. I know this might be an unpopular opinion in this stream. The whole, I don't want a woman to twist my head off opinion. It's okay. Even if that's what you want in real life, uh, you're gonna have a lot of difficulty finding a woman to do that to you. It turns out that human females have difficulty uh, pulling a man's skull and spine out of its socket. Sadly. Women, are you even trying? How can I properly come if you don't behead me during the, the act of uh, mating with you? Need arachne girlfriend? Yeah. It's the same mentality as autoerotic asphyxiation. I mean, that's not a, like a mind thing though, autoerotic asphyxiation. They're not getting off on the concept of getting choked. It's uh, getting, it's the very act of physically depriving the brain uh, any oxygen is what makes you come. It's not like the concept that you like, whatever, it doesn't matter. I kind of enjoy the concept of the struggle snuggle. My monkey brain part of me loves it. The only reason I like so much time money rape porn is because I, I already just discussed this during this stream. This is, we're going back to the same topic, but I like the idea of uh, me being powerful, right? I don't like the actual concept of rape. I just like the concept of having power over other human beings. So it doesn't even matter if it's like rape porn or not. I just appreciate the rape porn because it's harder to find. But like, you know, I like walking around in uh, GTA and just like shooting people in the head, you know, and being like, ah, there's nothing you can do about it. I just fuck you up, you know. I like video games for that reason. Tags domination loss. Yeah. I also like it to be kind of casual. One thing that annoys me is uh, Asanagi, and Asanagi Dojin came out recently. I've said this before, but what bothers me about Asanagi is that uh, he has to talk about how men are inherently more powerful than women for like 10 pages in every single fucking Dojin. It has to, we, he really has to just nail down the whole concept of 
no matter how powerful the female goddess is, she's, uh, you know, only a sex slave or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you know what? I've heard this before. Please, uh, please stop. I've heard, uh, your college theses about how women can't beat the cock. Redo the healer does that too. It turns into a comedy after a minute into the sexo. Yeah. I can't jack off if it's like the author is there speaking over my shoulder while I'm trying to jack off. Like if I can hear the author's personal manifesto coming out of the page. It's uh, it breaks my immersion. Megusaki domination loss equals peak. The word you're looking for is mesugaki. Please get your Japanese right. You have the gu and sa opposite. Mesu means female. Gaki means child. As in gaki no tsukai for those of you who like Japanese comedy. Gaki being a, uh, a child. You're being a, uh, a child that is forced to run around and pick up shit. That's what Gaki no Tsukai means. We're, we're trying to keep our female, our, our Japanese hentai terms accurate here, okay? This is very important. Harame, harame, harame. Yes, that is correct Japanese. Harame means get pregnant. Haramu means to get pregnant. Harame is a command form. I don't know what the right grammatical term it is for getting pregnant. You are yelling at the person to get pregnant. It's kind of a broken record, too. This is like uh, Asanagi Doji number 40, in which women realize that they exist to be dominated by male cock. All I know is that Megusakis need to be corrected. Again, incorrect term. Please use correct Japanese. Put up, put up, put up, put up. Uol, bratty child, immediate correction. The only uh, recent character that really made me feel that way about immediate correction was uh, Nicole Demara of Zenless Zone Zero, which is why I started working on that picture that I haven't finished yet. She has extremely powerful Mesugaki energy, but isn't an actual Mesugaki, as in she's a grown adult female, which is exactly what I want out of my women. The strong correction needed energy, but not actually being a child. Very important. Here in this image, we see several components of the Mesugaki. First, uh, pink hair indicates lewdness and a willingness for sexo. Look at the expression on the Mesugaki's face. A taunting, annoying smile that needs severe, immediate correction. Look at the, uh, the exposed cleavage and the extremely short, hot pants. Indicative of both her being an active character that uh, doesn't want to wear a skirt that will show Panchita, but also being highly sexual. The artist really cooked on the character design. The tall maid is hot too, yes. But what I like about Nicole is that she's really, really asking for it. Also, uh, her character is about her being in debt, which also immediately brings forth the concept of her being forced to sell her body to ugly old men for money. All the components are already there for proper doujin mesugaki correction. Now it's just up for our internet artist to make that into reality. Billy is just Deadpool. He really is, isn't he? It's okay. Deadpool is fine. I'm not going to use male characters anyways. Also, I'm not going to play Gotcha in the first place, so... She's a brokey. She just wants to pay this month's rent. Uh, 
Why do you think she has to uh, suck ugly, faceless old guys' dicks in an alleyway? I usually don't like short stacks, so the fact that I like Nicole's character design says a lot about her energy. I prefer my uh, anime females to be taller than shorter, usually. Deadpool is popular again, so might as well. The Deadpool manga is looking pretty fucking good, not gonna lie. I read it and I was impressed by the amount that the publishers were willing to allow. Like, they're straight up doing Detective Conan parodies and stuff, which isn't a Shonen Jump property, it's a Shonen Sunday property, so they don't have the rights to it. The, the Deadpool manga is like the opposite of that one isekai manga in which they had a bunch of popular parodies of other isekai manga's main characters as the enemies and it got cancelled after one week. After the first episode, the publishers were like, wait, this might be a bad idea and they just straight up cancelled it. If you compare that to the Deadpool manga, this is Shueisha, the Shonen Jump publishing company, being forced to uh, be prepared to uh, handle an extremely litigious company's property in that Disney and Marvel, right? So they need to have way more care than just uh, a normal property. It's not their own property, but they're still willing to allow all these crazy inside jokes. I often feel like editors get too much credit, but this is one where they, uh, they're they probably doing their job. I feel like Deadpool was funny as an edgy team, and yes, exactly, which is why you're not supposed to... You're no longer the target audience for the thing. You don't have to be a child the rest of your life, even if uh, someone like me I'm a child for the rest of my life, but you don't have to be that way, right? You can move on and read more adult content. Like, I don't know, professional wrestling. Erase. Delete. Delete the layer. Mm. I read plenty of adult content. Thank you very much. My uh, extensive porn fan fiction. Why Sue? Thanks for the uh, tier one sub. I appreciate the support. Have you read Minecraft Isekai? Is that like an officially published manga? No, I have not. I used to be on top of basically everything that was getting published, but now uh, I'm sort of just uh, checking out the things that show up in my on the internet. There's a Minecraft Isekai. There's multiple isekais of everything there's uh there's two isekai or three isekai basically of isekai hiroyuki for those of you who don't know who hiroyuki is he's the uh the creator of 2chan and the current owner of 4chan and he's one of the few people in japan who is kind of a professional troll because most Japanese people are like way too respectful for their own good. So he has like this weird position in Japanese society as like a professional troll at this point. So he has two fucking isekais about him. 
And it's just him showing up in an isekai and being like, um, excuse me, sir, I don't think that's true. Um, actually... And then, like, the opponent is like, oh my god! He said the, uh, the, the blinding trips of truth. I've been exposed. I can't beat Hiroyuki, the owner of 2chan and 4chan. It's, uh, extremely cringe. But it shows you how few people in Japan are occupy that kind of position in which they speak the truth. I can't wait for Jack Black to be isekai'd and be sent to Nether just like all the brain rot content told me. It's manga about dude getting isekai with Minecraft skills. He gets domed by Dark Elf. Oh, they don't actually use the Minecraft term. I've read multiple isekais, probably not the one that you're talking about where the guy gets isekai with Minecraft skills. It makes sense because it's one of the most popular video games of all time, right? And of course, uh, isekai authors can only just th take popular thing and be like, Oh my god, what if I went to set fantasy world with this skill, right? There was actually a Minecraft skill-themed isekai novel that I read specifically because the author wrote a normal isekai and then he went to the adult 18 plus version of the isekai novel website and he uh, he took the chapters in which he had already written as the normal isekai and put in like secondary chapters in which he showed what the women were doing while the main character was off doing other things and it turns out they were all like getting gang raped or get fu getting fucked by like uh, you know ugly bastards and stuff like that without the main character knowing so this guy has like in really intense corruption NTR fetish going on and he wrote his own novel and then he couldn't help himself and he had to go to like a separate the separate website and create his official spin-off uh, sex version of it in which the main character is getting cucked. It was pretty funny, but uh, he did finish his story like many isekais. Has Jack Black been in a good movie ever? Can't think of one. Yeah, good point. I can't think of one either. Some people would say School of Rock is a good movie, but I don't know. He's just like a, I love music, I love weed, I love being a party dude kind of guy, so it's understandable. Goshujin sama to yuku isekai survivaru. Yeah, here we go again. Wow, I sure haven't read that uh, story again. Oh man, isekai is so overdone. Holy fuck. I still read stuff on the uh, the actual website, but... In fact, the two best media content I'm reading right now are both on the Isekai website. So the people who can actually write good stuff are still writing good stuff. One is a not an Isekai, but a local fantasy character featuring this, like, uh, Middle Eastern scimitar-wielding half-vampire guy. And it's, uh, it has a lot of porn in it as well. He's, uh, he's doing... It's, it has a different flavor from standard Western fantasy, and it's very good. And the other one is an isekai, featuring basically isekai Jesus. It's like an isekai set in the middle... Also set in the Middle East, like a desert area. And the main character is an extremely powerful cleric. He's basically Isekai Jesus, and he's speaking truth to the money lenders and stuff like that. Both are very good. So basically, any of the stuff that you guys are reading is uh, is stuff I've probably already consumed and am bored with at this point. Tenacious D was right for my child brain to enjoy, but I recoil out of cringe today. So isn't Jack Black supposed to be the main character of the Minecraft movie coming up or something? He really is content for 12 years old. 12 year olds, isn't he? If that's, uh, if that's the, their plan.
he's kind of like a teddy bear, right? He's an edgy teddy bear who likes weed and guitars and rock. Isn't he a uh, Kung Fu Panda? Yeah, he really is a bear. He's a uh, unthreatening but somewhat edgy child cartoon made into a human being. And that's okay, he has to make his money. Not all content has to be for sad 40-year-olds drawing manga in their mother's basement. Some stuff can be for actual kids. So harmless that he ends up getting killed by his own weapons in that one flick with Bruce Willis. I don't even know what you're talking about. Kind of good thing to be honest. I mean, I think we've all forgotten that children's media used to be for children. This seems to be like an important lesson that we've forgotten in the year 2024 where grown adults all go and watch the Bluey movie or something. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, so I felt like the Bluey movie, it, uh, it does a good job grasping the inner turmoil of Bluey, but I felt that the themes were too childish for, uh, a modern consumer in 2024. It's like, God damn it, it's a fucking children's movie. You're not supposed to be watching it. When did we start all being like, well, not all, why did, when did all the cringe people start deciding that they were going to go watch children's content? Jesus Christ. No one has learned from My Little Pony. I completely agree. I mean, either the best case scenario is you're just exposing yourself as a man-child who has not been able to grow up. And you still like, uh... I mean, it's not even your childhood toys like Transformers and stuff. That's considered to be like legitimate adult entertainment. Even though that was supposed to be a child's toy. G.I. Joe, Star Wars. Those were all supposed to be child's toys. But now we have, like, legitimate, like, four-year-old content that adults are go gonna go watch. My Little Pony, Bluey, various Nintendo Pokemon stuff. It's for children! Children! There are parents here taking their children. It's not for you. Parents are like, I hope that guy in the front row isn't a pedophile. He probably is. Samurai Jack was mature as fuck. The death scenes. See, kids want to grow up. Once they get above a certain age group, they want to grow up. They want to be mature. And, uh, unfortunately the current cycle is they want to grow up and be mature, but then when they actually become an adult, they're like, I want to go and consume all my favorite slop from my childhood. Oh boy, I sure love playing the same Pokemon game. I sure want to fuck these ponies. Now adults buy the collectibles. It used to be adults would buy the collectibles because the children would want the collectibles and they would beg their parents to buy them for them and then they would keep their collectible collection until they were adult and then it would be have nostalgia value and be worth something. But now it's just adults buying the collectibles for themselves. I watch a YouTube show where they discuss personal finance and kind of uh, talk about why someone is broke. And in the past like 10 episodes, we've had two women talk about their massive Funko Pop collections with like hundreds of fucking Funko Pops. And I'm just like, oh my God. If my wife was wasting all of my paycheck on Funko Pops, you know, we're, uh, we're saying I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you immediately, activating the Sharia law and getting her out of there. At least use your money on, or my money on something that's, has good taste. 
for fuck's sake. Funko Pops, what is wrong with you? Jesus Christ. If you don't stop attacking Disney and Funko, I may have to do something drastic. Leave the multi-billion dollar corporations alone now. Don't make me come over here. But why? Especially but why when uh, Nendoroidos exist. That's the thing that truly bugs me, right? Is it would be fine. Well, it wouldn't be fine. It would be one thing if Funko, there was no replacement for Funko Pops, but there's the much better version right there. What is it about Funko Pops? And a lot of these people are like, they're going to be worth so much someday. I'm like, no, they're not. Are Beanie Babies worth a lot? They're not. Holy shit. You stupid motherfucker. Your Funko Pops are not going to be worth anything in the future. Please stop. Nice meat dude. He's making a tonkatsu. Feels good man. Will Ford is supposed to be like um, the uh, besides being an extremely brain dead individual when it comes to noticing the feelings of his childhood friend. He's supposed to be like the ultimate guy so he can cook and stuff, right? Think about all the rom-coms, the anime rom-coms that feature the main character being able to cook. This is actually pretty common. It's a common trope. It takes a man to properly handle the meat. That's right. What about Garbage Pail Kids cards? What about my uh, Cabbage Patch Kids 100 collection? What about my Treasure Trolls? Very important. Cicada Sexo. Yes, the window is open. It's just like my Japanese summer anime. Idealize male. All the world's greatest chefs are men. Don't you know, Hystrixia? This is what you have to say to men to get them to cook. I fucking love the 50s movies where there's like a scene where the guy's just like cooking a piece of meat and the wife who has to cook seven days a week usually is like, oh, but all the world's greatest chefs are men. I'm like, thank you, 50s housewife. Make me feel better about myself for making a steak once a month. Pokemon collectors are the dumbest mofos to exist. Are you talking about Pokemon, like, card collectors? Or Pokemon collectors who collect, like, the digital collection? Wasn't there, like, a whole um, Pokemon digital collection service that Nintendo was selling for, like, a subscription? You know what I'm talking about? Weren't they, like, charging you $10 a month or something to keep track of your, uh, the digital record or the digital data of your Pokemon across generations or something? She's gotta appeal to Hubby unless she beats her again? Yeah, beat her and then give her her, uh, drugs to make her happy. Both card and games. Pokemon cards, obviously. There was a massive Pokemon card bubble in Japan for a while. And uh, it burst recently, and a lot of the people who are reselling the cards were having a huge meltdown, which was pretty funny. But I'm not sure if we had the same in America. My Pokemon NFTs, I mean save data. Game Freak, please save them. You know, because it's Game Freak, even if you pay $10 a month for them to, like, save your Pokemon data, they're probably going to have some sort of massive server breach or some shit, and all of it is going to get lost sooner or later. Or it's just going to turn out that they weren't properly storing shit. 
Because this is game, game, freak we're t game Freak we're talking about, right? I wouldn't trust them with any kind of techno technology. They can barely program a game in the year 2024. Their games perform worse than, like, random indie slop on Steam being sold for, like, $3 and shit. Are you really gonna trust them with your Pokemon data? Because you probably shouldn't. It's all very silly. How did this crash and happen anyways? I don't know, man. People just realized that cards were overpriced. Who knows when speculators realize that there's just a bunch of other speculators wasting their money when it comes to these things, right? Because that's what it always comes down to when you have these bubble markets. Is you have a bunch of fucking speculators fighting against other speculators who are all competing over the prices of shit. And at some point they're like, wait... These prices are jacked up super high because everybody here is a speculator and then they don't know what to do and then it all fucking crashes. Remember the Pokemon card craze three years ago? It was wild? Yeah. I don't really remember because I try and avoid card games at this point, but yes. Card games are like NFTs and... Uh, Bitcoin before NFTs and Bitcoin. It's something that's worth something only because there's other people who think it's worth something and it's not backed by anything besides uh, nerds and speculators and speculator nerds. So it was basically what we had before we had Bitcoin, right? NFTs were so fucking hilarious, haha. -ha. I mean, it wasn't readily obvious that Bitcoin would be worth nothing, and it isn't worth nothing right now, so I'm kind of speaking too soon. There's theoretically some uses for Bitcoin, but it was always obvious that NFTs were worthless shit. Thoughts on Limbus Company? Haven't played it. Just drawn some porn so far, that's all. I guess I should play it, because I like stuff like Slay the Spire. What's the closest game to Slay the Spire if I want to play something besides Slay the Spire that is like a roguelike, not necessarily a deck builder, but has similar energy? If we have any PC gamers who would like to, uh, to suggest a video game for me. I'm still not done with Spire at all, so I don't know if I'll move on to a different game for a while, but I've been thinking of alternatives. It's not like Slay the Spire? Okay. It doesn't have to be like Slay the Spire, it just has to be like, have similar energy, you know? Don't screenshot my personal NFT. No, please! Not my, uh, my cyberpunk. Oh, what was the, what were they called? Pixel punks? Oh, I can't remember. I felt they were a very specific brand of stupid. What was it called? Like Pixel? Punk? NFT? Yeah! This is what I'm talking about, baby! Remember how popular these things were? Fuck yeah, bro! Aw oh, yeah! Not my fucking Pixel Punk NFT! Aw oh, man! Look at this thing! Surely this thing is worth, uh... $100,000. Which one of these is, is worth the most, you, you think? Is it this one in the corner with the glasses? Is it this one at the top with also glasses and a hat? I think it's a hat. What about the guy who's bald and has green hair? If this shit showed up like an indie video game, you would be like, man, this game's graphics fucking suck. The art design is ass. But instead, because it was during the NFT craze, we had a billion idiots online who were just like, Oh shit, I have all this extra, you know, uh, digital currency that I can't seem to cash out right now. I better use my Ethereum for something. Let's buy this piece of art. Holy fuck. What a stupid time. This will go down in history, like when we look back on like 1910, and, like, factories were like, maybe we should put 
up guardrails so we wouldn't have five workers' arms get torn off by exposed machinery every week. Nah, let's not do it. That's too much worker protections. And we look back at that time and being like, that shit was so stupid. People were so fucking stupid back then. People are going to look back at this time 20 years from now. Or maybe they already do, actually. I mean, I'm, I don't, we don't have to go that far in the future. And they're going to be like, holy shit, people are fucking stupid. Leather man on yellow background. I'm sorry, Hystrixia, but I don't think you can afford the yellow man. The leather man on yellow background. That costs uh, a solid $300,000. NFT buyers are morons to deserve to lose their money. To be fair, their money wasn't real money in most cases. They were people who speculated on the uh, crypto market to begin with. So they were also very eager to speculate on other forms of the crypto market, i.e. crypto related adjacent art shit. So... To be fair, most people knew NFTs were stupid since day one. I liked how the uh, the mainstream media had to kind of pretend like they weren't stupid for a while. They're like, oh, I, I know you don't understand it, but uh, there is a small possibility that they might not be as worth as much as they're going for, guys. It's like, uh, you think? You think, New York Times? New York Times trying to explain the concept of M NFTs to fucking boomers. I'm blessed with uh, boomer parents who are smart enough not to waste their money on shit like that. Even if they don't understand what it is. I have boomer parents who are conservative in the format of like they're not going to immediately try and be like, I will spend my money on this popular young person thing. So I don't have to be constantly monitoring them and making sure they're not like dumping all of their life savings into Dogecoin or something. Remember the NFT party where the host had UV lights set up and everyone woke up blind the next day? Yes. It's pretty funny. Paris Hilton's getting NFTs on Jimmy Fallon was the pinnacle of that time. We'll look back and be like, Ah, yes, the good old days when crypto bros made all of their fans go blind. So funny. Ha ha. My, the only thing my boomer dad invested in is the stock market. You have to be careful because if they go full boomer, they'll start watching Fox News and they'll invest in these, uh, you, they'll start investing in these silver scams where it's like you have to buy silver, but you're not actually buying silver. You're buying like a certificate of silver and stuff. Have you guys seen those? And if it gets really bad, they just straight up give their money to the church and the church is like, trust me. If you give a thousand dollars to Jesus, he'll return it to you tenfold. Yeah, I don't really understand how the silver scams work, but I know that it's not actual bars of silver. You're not actually buying hard metal, because if you were, uh, it would it wouldn't be a scam. It's like some sort of like proof of purchase or some shit like that, where they're like you have to protect your your wealth and savings from the liberals. And the only way you can do it and prepare for the apocalypse is buying these silver bars. And if you buy it, we'll send you this uh, piece of paper that says you own these silver bars in a secure location somewhere or some shit like that. It's like buying property on the moon. It's very funny, isn't it? That does sound like a scam, but actual silver is pretty good investment. This is not financial advice. The problem with having a bunch of silver bars and stuff sitting around in your house is if someone finds out, then uh, they have a very strong incentive to invade your house and shoot you and take your shit. So you're kind of bringing on more risk on yourself that you don't really need to be doing. I went to Vegas once with my mother in middle school. Just because I wanted to go to Vegas. And she's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, let's try going to Vegas. Which was a bad idea in retrospect. But, because uh, I couldn't gamble, right? But, uh, at the time, there was a local murder case. This will blow your mind, people in better countries than America. But America has enough homicides that if you go to, like, 
a special a different location and watch the local news they'll have these murder cases that are only reported in that location so we were watching the local news and my mother being a true crime fiend was just like completely addicted to this story it was the owner of the uh the gold nugget or one of these older strip casinos or off strip casinos either he had murdered something or he himself had gotten murdered but it involved silver in which somebody had a shit ton of silver bars and apparently they had driven out to the desert and were just like fucking burying silver bars in the desert like it was a fucking movie it was just like peak vegas energy and uh when we came back from vegas my mother tried to find reporting on this news story outside of Vegas and no one was reporting it because that's just how America works, you know. If you're in Japan, there's like a huge murder story like that. It's national news for weeks and weeks and weeks. But in America, if you leave the location, you no longer get news of this local murder story. It's pretty funny. Ted Binion? I think that's right. Yeah, we went to Vegas right around when I think Ted Binion got murdered or something. Let's actually take a look. Ted Binion Vegas death. September 7th, 1998, Binion was found dead on a small mattress on the floor of his Las Vegas estate at 2408 Palomino Lane near Ranchero Drive and Charleston Boulevard. He was involved in multiple criminal cases which included associating with organized crime figures. Binion had a multi-million dollar bullion coin and silver bar collection known as the Binion Horde. Yeah, this was shit was going down in real time when we visited v Vegas. No wonder my mother was so fascinated by it. Which he hid inside the Horseshoe Casino and had two properties that he owned. When Binion died in 98, there were suspicions of foul play. Binion's girlfriend Sandra Murphy and her lover Rick Tabish became the prime suspects after Binion's death. Both Murphy and Tabish were charged and convicted of bul burglary, grand larceny, and murder. The Binion Horde. Is it still out in the desert? Deep? He's had it installed deep in the ground of a vacant lot that he owned in Nevada. In the safe, he stored 46,000 pounds of silver including 135,000 silver dollars. Holy fuck. He died of an overdose, dose, or was he murdered? The authorities determined he had been murdered. Two days after his death, Richard Tabish and four other people were arrested for digging up the buried silver. Don't have a girlfriend and don't have million dollars of silver buried in the desert. That's, uh, that's a pro tip, guys. Holy shit, look at this photo. Now this is Vegas Kino right here, boys. God damn, that feels so Vegas. I love America. Just the, the energy of this whole photo. The fat guy with the cowboy hat. The much younger woman. The uh, weird horseshoe decoration. This gigantic plate of dollar bills or something. I don't know if this is like a huge stack of cash. Binion's Horseshoe Las Vegas. Feels good, man. Vegas people are special off-center dollar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Even that feels Vegas. Go to the Vegas uh, hotel and, like, things are fucked up. Like, some stuff is coming apart. The strip before it got sanitized was, like, some real energy. I never really went to it. But, like, everything being, like, slightly run down. The old Vegas strip. The fact that there's, like, no police back in the day. Like, in 98, there was really few police. And there was just, like, um security guards for each casino people are just burying shit in the in the uh the desert it's just like my fallout new vegas fantasies it really do be 
Fallout New Vegas out here before the apocalypse. Guys get murdered for a shit ton of silver bars. God, I love America. I mean, where else do you have the opportunity to be like a huge American Kona clap guy and have a ton of silver buried in the desert and then get murdered by your girlfriend and they're just like digging that shit up? Only in America, boys. Definitely not in Japan, that's for sure. I don't know even know where you'd store all that money. Although Japan is pretty close because they're a cash-based society as well. So they don't have the silver bars, but they have had like huge briefcases full of cash that just got discovered. I think it was like in the 70s. Japan briefcase full of cash historical event. Uh, oh, here we go. Three dec decades on, case of $1.7 million found in Japanese bamboo grove. In April 1989, a bag containing some 145 million yen, over 100 million, over $1 million at the time, was found in a bamboo grove in the city of Kawasaki, south of Japan's capital. The country had just ushered in the Heisei era and Japan's bubble economy was nearing its peak. Five days later, a paper bag containing another 90 million yen, over $680,000, turned up. What happens twice will happen thrice. Hoping for another lucky find, treasure hunters flock to the grove in the city. Under society's envious gaze, one of the two people who stumbled upon the cash maintained that the fuss wouldn't change his life. But a follow-up over three decades later revealed that the incident had left some unexpected scars. So I think he got a butt big finder's fee. The owner said it was some sort of tax evasion money. I think it was ultimately a mystery? Huh, no, it seems to be some restaurant operator shit. Anyways, uh, if you find a shit ton of money, it's usually not gonna make you happy. I always knew that Hello Kitty was secretly up to something. You should have, uh, figured that out when there was all the Hello Kitty vibrators showing up. Any chick that has Hello Kitty vibrators and Hello Kitty assault rifles isn't legit. That cat is up to something. Don't trust her. Money isn't happiness while well, I am broke, so. I mean, when you pick up money in an abnormal format, you get a lot of people that are going to come after you, so. This is why you don't really want to win the lottery. We have lots of evidence showing that if you win the lottery and people know you won the lottery, you're basically painting a huge fucking target on your back and you're going to have a bunch of people trying to murder you and stuff, so. Make your money slow in a boring way. And once you do make it, don't spend it and uh, move away from your poor neighborhood and don't make any new friends who claim that they know you. If you find a bag full of tens of thousands of dollars, probably don't take it. Yeah, just walk away from that shit. Especially now. It might be like tax evasion money from a restaurant owner if it's Japan in 1989. If it's, uh, if you're finding that much cash in America in 2024, it's 100% fentanyl drug money. And, uh, the fentanyl dealers are gonna show up at your doorste doorstep soon and you're gonna get a fucking bullet in your brain, so... Get the fuck out of there. You do not want to be holding on to that shit.
got kidnapped by a dude trying to get a ransom and got killed on accident. So I believe now you don't the the uh, the states running the lottery don't actually announce the people's names and faces and don't put you on TV and stuff. But back in my day, you had to go on TV to accept the money, which was basically like now you're gonna kill yourself or get murdered. Even if you don't get murdered, you're basically going to have to deal with the huge uh, loss of normalcy, which is a really traumatic experience. As much as you think you hate your job, you don't necessarily want to be unemployed with billions of dollars either. And you're going to get all these people showing up and pretending to be your friends and it's going to fuck with your mind. The loss of normalcy is a huge difficult thing that people have difficulty overcoming. like when you have a national natural disaster and you have to leave your house even if uh, your new living situation is okay a lot of people can't deal with the change in routine and it fucks them up no one wants to be unemployed period yeah you need to have some kind of activity that takes up your time or else it's the same as being in prison I know I was unemployed during the uh, the recession for quite a while. It just feels like you're treading water, like you're not going anywhere. If you've made all your money and you quit your job, what the fuck are you living for now? You better find something fast or else you're going to start to get really depressed. If you can't, f if you don't feel like you're gaining something in your day-to-day -day life, then you're going to start to feel like you're trapped and you're wasting time. loss of accomplishment or whatever. I'm sure there's a psychology term for this. The guy that kidnapped the Lindbergh baby dropped him after getting out the window. He still tried to get the ransom even though the baby was dead. I mean, wouldn't you? You went through all this hard work kidnapping the fucking Lindbergh baby. I want my money, god damn it. I'm not going to let a few dead babies get in the way of my fortune. Why do you work in the first place? You gotta have some kind of goal, not just making money. Yeah, I mean, most jobs aren't gonna provide you with that sense of accomplishment anyway, so it's not necessarily a bad idea to quit your job if you're, you know, working at Mickey D's or whatever. But now is the time when you have to go and find some sort of sense of accomplishment besides your job. Like drawing big anime titties like I am right now. Alright guys, we've made enough progress where I have to go back to the line work, which means it's time to play Guess the Game. Guess the Game time. What is it? 6 p.m.? Oh man, it's going to start getting uh, so chill after today. We're going to have highs in the 70s thanks to the, the uh, post-hurricane weather up here. I'm looking forward to it. The end of summer approaching soon. Feels good, man. You know, like 90% of my life quality is just it not being summer anymore. Guess the game, let's go. Yes, all right, here's today's guess the game. Um, orange pillars. This looks like wee shit, if you ask me. Does it look, this look like a Wii game? Or maybe PSP Splatoon? Oh, I don't think it's Splatoon. I feel like Splatoon has better graphics than this. This is 2D. Yeah, I think it's 2D too. It feels maybe like PSP or something. Uh, I don't know, man. Not Sploon. Cuphead? No, Cuphead, uh, Cuphead would have black lines somewhere. Sunshine. We had a Mario Sunshine guess. 
uh, quite a while ago, so it might come around again, but I don't think so. We can try Splatoon. It is orange. Cuphead is unmistakable. Yeah, it's definitely not Cuphead. We can try Splatoon if you don't... Oh, something tells me Nidog. I like that. Needhog. I don't think it's Nidog. It's like a Needhog, right? Is there an H? Kid Nicky. We can try Needhog too. It's not Wind Waker. No. Um, isometric, top down. It almost looks like Owl Boy, but we had an Owl Boy guest recently. Um, probably Indie Slop. It almost looks like uh, Capcom version of the Zeldas. This is some very recent. What about Moonlighter? I played like about five hours of Moonlighter before I got bored. I think I'm gonna try Moonlighter. It had this specific green in its uh, in its uh, title. I think it might be Moonlighter. Yeah, I played a bit of Moonlighter. This uh, this specific green uh, they use it in the um, the art as well. I think it's like the the, your, the color of your shop. Yeah. If it's actually a game I've played, I, you can usually guess it pretty quickly. I got bored very quickly, actually, of it. It turns out I don't like ru running a shop at all. I'm not a good shop owner. I just want to murder shit. Okay, so that's the most recent one. Yeah, it's one of the few uh, indie slop games I've played recently. Um... All right, we have to go to previous days. The shop mechanic bored you? Yeah, I don't want to service people. I want to be a asshole that kills things and then sells them. I don't want to be the person who's running the shop, you know? I quit the game when I was, I thought I was running the shop well and some fucking shoplifter stole one of my things and ran out and I wasn't allowed to run out after them and murder them in the street in my Florida style stand my ground laws so I, after that I was like fuck that alright here we go next uh just cause hmm so one of the little secrets of guess the game is if you take the zoom in around the corners you can get more information than what you actually see because it zooms in on the stuff off the screen as well so there's some kind of doorway down here the rest is just like mountains and shit it's like oblivion with better graphics could be warzone uh, but this is a tree right here i think this is mountains not looking down. Doesn't this look like a tree though? I don't think this is an aerial looking down and this is the ocean. I think it's the opposite. Crisis? We, uh, we guess Flight Sim. Ass Creed? Alright, we can do War Zone. It could be anything. Chat just blindly guessing no one knows. Let's try Crisis 2. I feel like Crisis has better gra graphics than this, though. Yeah, um, okay. Not rated. Recent game. Possibly indie slop. Um, good graphics. European. European aesthetic. Trash Pits can't always be here to bail us out, chat. We have to be strong without him. I'm here, I don't know what this is. Oh, he's being fucking useless. I was waiting for the uh, shonen manga-like appearance of Trash Pits to be like, 
Don't worry, guys. It's me, Naruto, showing up to save the day. I like the death loop guess, actually. It does feel the the palette does feel like a death loop. I like the death loop guess. Let's try that. It is heavily stylized. No. Oh, this is a uh, this is a climbing one. Is it always up? Which one of the stupid fucking climbing games is this? There's like 10 of these now after uh is it only up? Okay. God, um, the first one really, really fucking, what was the first one called? The one where you're actually in, oh, getting over it. It really sparked a, uh, a new genre of video games I really don't want to play, didn't it? Fucking hell, it's a streamer game. What a dead giveaway. I mean, they have to show it sooner or later, right? Yeah. No wonder it looked like the sky and the mountains and trees and stuff in a way that doesn't make sense. So this is a tree floating in the air because it's on a fucking floating island and you are looking down. You know? Climb up the mountain in the game and then fall and have all your, uh, all your listeners or watchers troll you being like, Oh, the streamer fucked up, haha. -ha. Fuck that dev and his dumb games. This all started with Dark Souls, right? It's Miyazaki's fault. Miyazaki took the trend of people being like, uh, every game has to be extremely user accessible. And then he made it so, like, video games need to be, need to be difficult again. And then, like, ten years later we end up with getting over it and Jump King and Only Up. And it's like, oh, if you fuck up, you have to start from the beginning. Isn't that fun? Look how much suffering you're experiencing, and all your viewers are going to be like, ha ha ha. Alright. Um, I feel like people might have seen this before. I don't know. Any Lucas Art point and click? Day of the Tentacle? Let's try Day of the Tentacle. I've, I haven't played any... Um, any Lucas Art stuff. It kind of feels like Day of the Tentacle. Jesus Christ. I've, I've never even seen a single screen of Day of the Tentacle. What the fuck? You really nailed the Lucas Art part, didn't you? Trapezoid shape really reminds me of that. Yeah, it's something about the, the stylized trapezoid shape. That makes you think uh, Day of the Tentacle, doesn't it? I've seen the actual art. I've never watched a playthrough. I've never played it. The only thing I've seen of Day of the Tentacle is this thing right here. I'm just not interested in point and clicks, you know? I don't care if it's uh, Grim Fandango or whatever. Okay, uh, now this looks like Zenless Zone Zero right here. Doesn't it? Doesn't this look like ZZZ? It's not because it's game 447, so ZZZ wasn't out at the time. Is this Splatoon 3? I mean, this looks kind of like Splatoon 3. Okay. All the Nintendo files in here. We've had Splatoon already, so if you say Splatoon 3, then I'm gonna go with Splatoon 3. It might be 2. Yeah, okay. Nintendo games are too easy for this chat. Despite all the shit I talk about Nintendo, it really says a lot about A, how their art design is on point so people can immediately recognize it, and B, the fact that I think that if we actually did a survey, most of the people in this chat, what they have is they have a gaming PC plus a Nintendo, some kind of Nintendo. I'm guessing that's what most people here have, is everyone has like a Switch and a gaming PC. I know Hystrixia has that as well, so... Some kind of PC game, and then the nin shit. I will never buy a PS5. Yeah. If you have a gaming PC at this point, there's really no reason to buy a PS5. It's, uh, it's pretty redundant. Um, horror? We have a flashlight? 
Hello? This feels like RE... No, RE7 has way better graphics than this. Outlast 2 is darker. I don't think it's either RE7. Look, look at the, uh, the details. RE7 looks better than this, man. Left 4 Dead 2? Ah, uh, maybe? I mean, the, the level of, uh, texture detail seems about right. We have two people saying Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, I think that's a good guess, but maybe? I don't know. No need for a switch when emulation exists. Haha, <laughs> he's joking, chat. Nobody in this chat would ever think of stealing from Nintendo. That's illegal. And that's wrong. No. 61%. It's a shitty game, guys. He has a... Uh, a pipe. Could it be the uh, Friday the 13th game, possibly? Yeah, I was thinking Friday the 13th. Pipe. Cabin. Flashlight. Seems uh, Friday the 13th. Shitty score. There are no asymmetric games with good scores. It seems Friday the 13th. I like that guess. Friday the 13th a game. Yep. Pretty easy. We were able to guess that. I hope they show some tits. Tits. Oh my god! Tits. We were robbed of Evolve. Um, Evolve had that one uh, hot monster that everyone wanted to fuck because it had the uh, the wide hips. Evolve Game Wraith. And that is its lasting legacy right here, this thing. Extremely submissive and breedable monster right here. When uh, human men see monster that looks like this, with this form, all they can think of is uh, breeding it. All they can think of is uh, penis insertion inside monster to impregnate monster with human children. Just looks like a sliver from uh, MTG. Yeah, the curves are there. Just stupid, uh, stupid asymmetrical monster. Needs human dick correction. Look at this thing. Holy fuck. I've said this many times before as an artist. The thing that activates male neurons is if you have the hourglass shape and the hips. As soon as you give anything this shape, men just immediately want to fuck it. Folded up legs? Yeah. Bitch is trying to keep her legs closed, but... As men, we, uh, we're going to try and split those legs open and stick the dick in. It's like the mermaids that have asses and thighs. Whoa, fuck monster. Whoa. How many entries on R34? You can look for yourself later when you go and come. S sexy carrot. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about right here. Talk about uh, massive neuron activation right here. Twitch, don't ban me. Gotta fuck the carrot now, guys. Oh. Expand dong when they see the carrot. Here we have the male version, but... We're not gay, so we don't want to fuck this carrot. Oh, this is a good one right here, baby. Yeah. Oh, look at the legs on this, baby. Oh, fuck. This carrot is really asking for that shit. Damn. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Alright, enough, uh, enough masturbating over produce and monsters. Next. Um, uh, which indie slop was this? 
This is a human. I was I was thinking about something of steel with the mice. But this is a human, so which one is this? I'm sure people have played this. Uh is this the one in like a monastery? Pentimento? Bro, are you sexing a carrot? Why not? She's asking for it. Tonight we riot? Pentimento. That seems about right. I feel like I've seen this before, but I don't play enough 2D indie slop. Pentiment. You nailed it. Got it. There we go. Yeah. I think I had seen it before. It's, uh, it's very hard to hide this level of artistic, you know, direction. You can pretty much see what's going on. It was good, yeah. Kino Middle e Medieval Fantasy. It's one of those games that if I wait long enough, it's gonna show up in my PS Plus free games monthly, eventually, so then I'll play it then. Next, um, okay, this is going to be a famous game, because they are only showing very small amount of it. DS? This is good. It's definitely a famous game. Oh, you don't know Jack? Huh. Res it's not Resident Evil. Where would there be this kind of purple shit in Resident Evil? This is like a 6, this is like a D, it looks like. It's Roblox? It could be Roblox. Anything could be Roblox, who knows. This looks like a hand, though. We can try Roblox. Eventually, Roblox is gonna show up. I don't think it's showed up yet. It's not Roblox. It might have showed up, actually, now that I remember. I think we've had Roblox. Hmm. It feels like that N64 Space Station game. But, uh, they would show more for that. It's something that, if they showed more, you'd be able to guess it. So we should be thinking in terms of famous games. PS1, kinda? I still think it's N64. RuneScape? It's not RuneScape. When RuneScape showed up, it came out- RuneScape has shown up in the past, and people immediately guessed it the first time they saw the grass. There's a lot of people in chat who have like 3,000 hours in RuneScape, unfortunately, so... Space Channel 5? Uh, that's not what I meant, but it could be Space Channel 5 as well. Space Channel, Channel 5 would definitely be a game in which uh, letters would show up on screen. There is a very specific N64 uh, game about a space station, which I'm trying to think of, and it's probably not this. 64 game about space... Oh, Space Station Silicon Valley. I remember this. Remember this, boys? Nostalgia. It's still stuck in my mind. We have to go back! But yeah, if it was that, it would be, uh, they would show more. Yeah, I don't think it's Space Channel 5 either. We can do it. Yeah, it was a rental game. Um, 90% minigames? See, I told you it was famous. It's a famous game, very well reviewed. Is it DDR1? Okay. I think you're right. That would make sense, because... Yeah, there you go. Because so many people fucking played it. And this definitely looks like uh, the flying shit. I didn't know it had this kind of graphics, though. Every Asian has played 10 million hours of DDR1 except me. So... Smoke! Mr. Ed jumps the gun, final stage. Ready. 
That's the score screen. Yeah, I think I might have seen it as well. Get on it. No, I'm not going to dance in public. Fucking no. You are American. Yeah, I'm more white than Asian, that's for sure. Next. Uh, Putt Putt goes to the zoo. Castle Crashers. Is it Castle Crashers? Okay, I've never played Castle Crashers. Oh, I guess a lot of people played that on 360 back in the day. Easy. The graphical style is pretty obvious, of course. Flash, yeah, the Flash art style. Feels good, man, we have to go back. We have to go back. The animal shitting stage. Yeah, I guess I should have played this. I missed my time to play it. Update after a long time. Feels good, man. Me and the boys on Friday night. Next. Um, fake Roman Coliseum. Is it God of War? I think it's too obvious to be God of War. Everyone's saying God of War. I don't think it is God of War, though. It feels like more like Rise of Rome than God of War. Or some Roman adjacent. I don't think it's God of War. I bet it's Rise, yeah. Uh, Total War... I think Rise had better graphics than this. But, uh, I don't know. The brown and bloom seems Rise. Let's try Rise, uh, Son of Rome. Actually. Or Atelier Riza, the ever darkness in the secret hideout. Was it just R I S E instead of the cool spelling? How the fuck did they spell that? Should I son of Rome? Oh, it's R Y S E. God, they're stupid fucking spellings. Yep, got it. Good guess. It does have the uh, the lighting typical of the time. I remember when it came out, and it was like, holy shit, the graphics are so good. And uh, yeah. That was the only thing good that we could ever say about Xbox One, is that Rise Son of Rome had good graphics and not particularly great gameplay. What the fuck has Microsoft been doing the last, uh, I don't know, ten years? Look at that titty at least. Ex-boner game. Oh, I hope you're allowed to murder this woman. That would be cool. Who could possibly win this woman wearing a leather bra strap or uh, this fully armored centurion? 60%? It was not a good game. Its only good part was its graphics. It's like 10 hours long at most. Maybe 5 hours long. Boudica Jesus? Wrong. The Boudica that I know is the FGO Boudica and her boobs are way bigger. Yeah, the animation was also shit, even though the lighting and stuff was good. Uh, is this Fallout? Fallout? Fallout, guys? Fallout? Anything besides Fallout? Is it Fallout 1 or 2? That's the question. Is it 1? Okay. I should just say something other than Fallout just to piss off chat. Be like, guys, no. I'm sure, I know what I'm doing. I'm a pro gamer, it's not Fallout. This is StarCraft, guys. This is the StarCraft barracks. I, this is what the StarCraft factory looks like. Hello Kitty Island. Thank you, female viewer. At least Hystrixia, a professional female gamer, uh, knows what, what good games look like. Hello Kitty Island, known for its uh, muted brown palette 
and rusty interiors and burnt out cars and stuff like that. All right, easy. Gigantic hole in the middle of nowhere. Does he have a fucking mullet for strength? That's pretty funny. FGO Boudicca could not survive in real life. Her spine could not support those badonkers. I have a secret to tell you. Real life Boudicca also didn't survive in real life because Rome uh, raped her and her daughters and then murdered all the English people and stuff. And then she uh, led a revolt and then she lost, so... Yeah, real life Boudicca not doing great either. Turns out Rome was kind of badass like that. Next. Yeah, sorry for the spoilers about Boudicca. FGO Boudicca doesn't have spine-breaking boobs. Yeah, FGO Boudicca's boobs are like pretty normal size, actually. Imagine getting raped and people find it sexy. Yeah, thousands of years later, Shindo L making uh, a uh, rape doujin about you. Guess what? Boudicca didn't actually exist. I'm pretty sure. Boudica history exist? Maybe she exists. Is there any evidence of Boudica's existence? Despite being one of the first British women mentioned in history, there's no direct evidence that she even existed. We said we have to rely on the accounts of two classical authors. Tacitus and Cassius Dio, both writing decades after the alleged battles between Boudicca's rebel army and the new Roman overlords. She was always a dojin character, guys. It was fucking Roman dojin authors being like, wouldn't it be super sexy if there was a strong barbarian warrior woman who uh, fought against Rome and ultimately lost? It's fucking fan fiction, guys. They weren't even there. They were just like, oh man, it would be so hot. British barbarian woman. It's okay. If, if she shows up in FGO, she's real. Just like all the other real FGO historical figures like King Arthur, who happens to be a cute girl. Alright guys, next game. Serious business now. What is this... Uh, Beautiful sunset with a tower in the background. This kind of looks like Dragon Age Inquisition, I feel. I think I'm going to guess Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm not sure why. It reminds me of there's an area in J Dragon Age Inquisition where uh, you could unlock shit by going around this like desert area. If it's not Dragon Age Inquisition, give me a better guess. I'm gonna go Dragon Age Inquisition. No. Uh, Halo. 78%. What is this? It looks like a Halo ripoff, but Halo would be better than 78% unless it's Halo 4? Halo 4, anyone? No. Hmm. What could this be? That is Halo? I mean, the purple looks Halo. If it's 78%, it's either Halo 4 or Halo 5, right? It could be Star Wars, though. I don't think Halo had this kind of uh, spaceships. I think it's more of a Star Wars game than Halo. Honestly. This looks like Coruscant. 78. You think it's Jedi, not Outcast, but uh, the one that featured Star Killer. What was the one that featured like Darth Star Killer? The action game. Force Unleashed. I'm gonna guess Force Unleashed. Let's try that. The 
Force Unleashed 2. Holy shit, there's a lot of games. No. Franchise Star Wars. That narrows it down a lot, guys. This fucking conehead. Which Star Wars game is it, boys? Let's go. It's not Legos. I don't think it's Tor. Or, or maybe it is Tor. The, uh, yeah, I think you're right. No, it is Tor. Yeah. It's Tor. Yeah, you're right. Not the, uh, the, the, the MMO. Hello? Not two. Wait, what the fuck was the MMO called? Wasn't it, wasn't it just Tales of the Old Republic? So which ones were the Obsidian Games calls and what was the MMO called? Is it just the Old Republic, not Tales? Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Is it... Uh, we're not getting the Old Republic. What about Star Wars colon the Old Republic? Knights of the Old Republic? I think it is the MMO, but we're not getting the title by just doing Star Wars the Old Republic. Yeah, it's not Knights of the Old Republic. It's not the Xbox games. The graphics are too good for that. What the? Is it just the Old Republic? Uh, it's not showing up, man. Battlefront Remit? We could do Battle... Ugh. I just feel that the 78% um, the just feels so real for the MMO, because it was like the Tortanic, right? The fucking Tortanic. Alright, I'm gonna look up the title. This is bullshit. Tortanic. Star Wars The Old Republic. Star Wars The Old Republic does not show up. So it it's not... That's not what it is. It's something else. Interesting. Huh. Weird. Shall we try Battlefront, I guess? No. Fucking Christ, man. Okay, the third person sci-fi action. And it's not The Force Unleashed. Star Wars Connect, the new one. Fallen Order. I think the new Battlefront had way better graphics, though. Also, they usually give you the correct answer if the title is the same, even if it's not the right... the, the year. What about two? We can try Fallen Order. I think Fallen Order had better... I think Fallen Order had way better review than 78%, though. Fallen Order was well-reviewed. People like Fallen Order. 78 is low. I don't know. We'll try it. Yeah, it's wrong. Uh, is this the redhead guy? 2023. It's two. Okay. It's the second one. Uh. Uh, Jedi. Uh, okay. Is it... It goes outcast? No. Survivor is the first one. It's the second. It's the one after Survivor. Or is it the Jedi Survivor? Okay. Yeah. Is it? It's Jedi Outcast is one. Jedi Survivor is the second one. Finally. Oh, okay. fucking Christ. Jesus Christ. That's no fun. Guess which Star Wars slop it is, boys. Oh, remember which subtitle it was called. Sure fun. Why so many Star Wars games? We don't feel like that, though. It, it feels like there's not enough Star Wars games. At least it felt like that forever. It's like, this is the coolest IP of all time. Why don't we get more Star Wars games? And then they're like, here, we'll give it to EA. 
And it's like, no, 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 no. That's that's not what I meant. Monkey paw, monkey paw, monkey paw. Please, no more Star Wars games. Fallen Order was my little brother's first Souls-ish game. I don't think it's that bad a game. It's not... F yeah. All right, next. We don't need to think about EA Star Wars anymore. Um, fear? Fear, anyone? This looks like fear. Look how black this shit is. How dark everything is. I want to guess fear. Anybody have any other opinions? I don't think it's Manhunt. Manhunt graphics aren't going to be this crisp. Manhunt is PS2. Way too bright? No, not fear. But fear is bright in... Um, yeah, F-E-A-R. Fear is bright when you actually get in the sunlight parts. A lot of people saying it's not fear, but... I don't think it's Manhunt, that's for sure. Suffering? Bricks? Yeah, you're right. There isn't any real bricks in fear. I don't think we've guessed fear yet, so I don't think they would go to fear 3 immediately. I just realized this music in the background has been repeating, like, fucking video game music for, like, six hours now. It's 12 hours long, holy fuck. If I was listening to this stream and I heard the music repeat for the millionth time, maybe you can't hear it with me, like, screaming at the top of my, my head, but that shit pisses me off. Condemned? Yeah, I like Condemned, but I think it showed up before. I think we've done Condemned. It might, let's try Condemned 2. Because I'm pretty sure Condemned show up. League of Legends. Oh my god. We have a fucking first time chatter just to troll with League of Legends. I would actually play League of Legends to look like this instead of the horrible uh, color palette they use. No. It's not Condemned 2. It's not Condemned. Oh, is this Dante's Inferno? What the fuck is this? Doesn't this look like Dante's Inferno? Oh, Killing Floor? Oh, right, Killing Floor. Okay, yeah, I think it's Killing Floor. You're right. Yeah, Killing Floor is a good guess. Uh, Killing Floor 2, I guess. There we go, yeah. I played about 10 minutes of Killing Floor. It's, uh, it's not a great looking game, not gonna lie. It also feels kind of shitty as well. Also, I don't have friends to play it with. Next. Wave shooter, yuck, yeah. The uh, bully? Kind of looks like bully. Bad image from GTA 4. It feels like Boston, right? It just immediately is like, this looks like Boston. That northeastern area. Life in Strange has better get, uh, graphics than this. It feels like a college town with the Boston lighting. I like uh, bully. I'm going to try bully. Not the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. What the fuck? Yep. You can't hide the Rockstar lighting. Rockstar has such good local lighting for... Whether it's Los Angeles or, you know, whatever. It really makes you feel like you're in New York or Boston or LA. Or Vice. Right. And uh, just the red brick and the lighting, it was just like, is this bully? You know? Yeah, here's this fat fuck. Man, I played bully going around kissing girls like I play GTA going around shooting people and running over prostitutes. I was just a fucking fiend for the touch of 13-year-old girls. 
Which is probably why they're not letting us uh, remake it. They can't let us live out our uh, prepubescent girl kissing fantasies. When I was allowed to beat the shit out of other kids and take their stuff. And hold hands with young women. Bully man, they don't make it like they used to. It's one of those mid-budget video games that had a lot of shit to do in it that they're just not gonna make anymore. If they wanted to make Bully now, they would uh, announce it and it would take like six years to come out and it would have like a uh, a budget of 200 million dollars and uh, they would have like five expansion packs and shit. They wouldn't just make the game and be done with it. No, the clipping potential in a video game, guys. In video game, Twitch. It's uh, not in real life. I wasn't kissing 13-year-old girls in real life. Dev cost would be three billion. It really would be. Bully us, BB-san. I like how there was a brief media controversy where they were like, "No, guys, trust us. It's not a game where you bully other kids. It's you're preventing bullying. You're you're." Sticking up to the bullies, and I was 100% bullying people. I was definitely using that prep school environment to bully the shit out of everyone. You were kissing 13 year old boys? Please, Twitch. They're only joking. In Roblox, Twitch. Next. Uh, Bioshock? What the fuck is this? This looks like Bioshock E, doesn't it? These textures. These uh this weird lighting and this weird soft ass textures. And this weird mechanical shit. Biocock. It could be Bioshock 2, but I think it's Bioshock 1. No, it's Bioshock 2. 88%. Heavy Bioshark or Call of Cthulhu vibe. Yeah, I guess Call of Cthulhu also has this kind of lighting and then this type of technology. I think we've already guessed Bioshock. The end of Ryan is the end. Medical Pavilion. Whoa, look at that lowly. Talk about that complex morality system where you either get to, uh, be evil and murder women, or uh, be kind and protect the lowlies and save them. Video game morality so complex. You're either evil and it's red, or you're good and it's blue. Such deep, complex decisions, guys. Next. That's like peak 2010 energy right there. The save the cat or murder the cat. And famous is so funny, it really is. Okay, we have a pipe. With shitty graphics. Don't say Silent Hill, guys. It's not Silent Hill, there's not a giant ass pipe in Silent Hill, I think. Hystrixia are a resident Silent Hill specialist, it's not Silent Hill, I assume. Red Faction? I like the Red Faction guess. I think Red Faction had a monorail that kind of looked like this. Let's try Red Faction. I think the Red Faction is a good guess right there. Red Faction 1. No, it's not Red Faction. 70%. Is this black? You guys remember black? This looks like a shooter. I think Black had a better score than 70%, though. I can't think of anything else. Still think it's Rage? Uh, I think Rage had slightly better graphics than this. I tried playing Rage, and then it was on PS3, so whenever you would move the camera, the fucking mega textures would have to reload. 
So you were in a constant reloading screen on the PS3. The PS3 was more powerful than the Xbox 360, but poorly optimized shit was so bad. Holy fuck. It was completely unplayable. Infamous is so funny. For a long time I didn't know you could restrain enemies without killing them and kept wondering why my rep was in the red. I'm just murdering hundreds of people, guys. It was like that everywhere, even on PC. They fixed it a few days after release. They didn't fix it on PS3, that's for sure. I rented it on PS3 like six months after it came out and it was still like that. Never got patched on PS3. Sony gave no support to no Japanese devs. I mean, fuck that, man. Mega textures were stupid. There's a reason why nobody else is using them, unless I misunderstand something. If we don't have any other guests, I'm gonna do black. Because why not? It was just, just black, right? Nobody knew how to program for the PS3? Wrong. Naughty Dog could. Naughty Dog always could. Naughty Dog always figured that shit out. Was it like B... No, it's not. I'm just gonna do black. No. Uh, PS2. It clearly is a PS2 game. It's blurry and muddy as fuck. Who the fuck is this guy? It is Killzone? Okay, Killzone 1. Okay, I didn't play any Killzones before 3, so... There we go. Whoa, big gun, shoot things, whoa! I mean, this is really good graphics for a PS2 game, not gonna lie, right? It looks comparable to Halo, which was on a considerably more powerful system than PS2. I remember this game looking way better. Yeah, the nostalgia goggles for the graphic ability of Killzone is probably pretty strong, considering at the time it seemed like it was like a fucking marvel, so... Next. No, I'm not gonna support you. Airplane. Uh, Misty Mountains. We have several options. Tomb Raider, Just Cause, Uncharted. Or none of the above. I think Just Cause might be the most immediate guess. Um, it could be a cutscene from Tomb Raider. Or... Uh, I don't know, Predator, Shadow of Tomb Raider, that's the graphics FPS test? Okay. Peak PC gamer moment. I have to test my fucking FPS. Good job. Uncharted 1 never had a playing. I think 2 did though, didn't it? I like how they kept on making Tomb Raider less and less sexy, Lara less and less sexy as the, the, the game goes forward. By Shadow of the Tomb Raider, they just make her like a frumpy, like, gremlin bod. Because in 2, she was still relatively sexy, and in 1, they were like making horse porn of her, right? So by 3, they were like, No, we have to stop them from sexualizing our girl, no! It was so bad. Dropped when I saw her not badass sexy. It was really noticeable how unsexy they had somehow made her by the third game. They really are just terrified of having sexy girls in their games. Light RPG elements. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. Uh, famous game. Is this like Warcraft, guys? Which TRPG is this? Is this Warcraft? Warcraft 1? Okay. When it's something so limited and everyone's just immediately gonna guess, you know it's one of the famous ones, right? So... 
It's not Warcraft. We have like four people saying Warcraft 1. Yeah, it's Warcraft. You're wrong! Everyone's like, no, wait, maybe it's not Warcraft. Let me, let me tell you. The way I guess the game works is if it's like super limited something like a tree, then it's probably like a super famous game that everyone can organize. Not organize, can recognize. If they give you, the more limited the information is, the easier it is to recognize as a game. So this shit, everybody who's played Warcraft has probably looked at the fucking trees for 10,000 hours, of course, so... No, look at the orc boys dead! I can't believe... I can't believe my orc boys are dead! No, Stormwind... Town Hall... Just chopping away at the forest. I can't believe that the World of Warcraft spin-off has such shitty graphics. Warcraft was so good, how did they fuck it up so bad? As someone who is never a Blizzard fan and never a Warcraft fan, I will never understand. And have never actually played the games, I will never understand the nostalgia and what you guys lost. I did play a bunch of Starcraft though, because it was on N64. So I did enjoy Starcraft 1. You could actually play Starcraft 1 on N64 somewhat. It even had Brood War if you had the uh, expansion pack. It was pretty cool. It was one of those games where it shouldn't be able to run on the N64, but it did. Alright, next. Um, yeah, there was N64 StarCraft and N64 Resident Evil 2. Two games that were like, these are CD games, and yet they somehow got them to run. Titan Quest? I mean, that's a really good guess. It looks like Titan Quest. I've been thinking of buying and playing Titan Quest forever. Because I like uh, those kind of isometric shit, and I haven't done it. Let's try Titan Quest. You nail it. Good guess. Early guess. You redeemed yourself for saying it wasn't Warcraft in the previous one. Two thousand six. Man, this was these were bad graphics for even for two thousand six. I would say. Good guess. Next. The chat is pretty powerful right now. Um. Nintendo slump? What the fuck is this? Is this like a golf game? Super Monkey Ball? Crab game? Is this a recent streamer shit? That was a pretty immediate crab game guess. Good job. I guess a lot of people have been streaming this, haven't they? Is it like a squid game? Yeah. Uh, streamers have been a blight on society, guys. How do we stop them from existing? We must take down Twitch. Oh wait, it's gonna die on its own if we just ignore it because it's not profitable. Next. Says the streamer. Hey, I wouldn't be streaming if... Uh, if Twitch died tomorrow, I would be okay with that. Oh my god, my eyes are in pain. What the fuck is this image? Oh god, the, the blurriness is... it hurts. What the fuck is this? This is like PS1 slop trying to be an N64 game. Oh, the fucking color palette. I was thinking Spyro, but I thought Spyro had better art direction than this. Let's just try Spyro so I don't have to look at this fucking image for so long. Jesus. Yeah, it's not Spyro. Spyro has better art direction than this. Not rated. What the fuck is this, man? It's, I, I would definitely think it's PS1, though. Roll and stick to stuff. Katamari Damashi. Katamari Damashi is a PS2 game. It has better graphics than this. 
It's not even the Spyro franchise. Huh. It might be Indie Slop pretending to be a... Uh... Yeah, Hystrixia has probably played 2,000 hours of rolling up people, so... I think she would immediately recognize Katamari. It also doesn't have this kind of spires and stuff in Katamari, unless it's like Katamari 6, Katamari Fantasy or some shit. Hystrixia regularly masturbates to her extensive dojing collection of the king of all cosmos, so she would immediately recognize, recognize any Katamari Damacy content. If it was were Indie Slop, it would have a rating, unless it's uh, not released. Oh, but it says not released, though, you're right. King of all cosmos, Giga Chad, yeah. We all wish we were as hot and sexy as King of all cosmos. Um... Huh. Well, it's not Spyro. Can we think of any kind of fantasy-related shit? Um... King of All Cosmos Doji would be a tangent about going on vacation to Tahiti. Is there a Queen of All Cosmos? Queen? Oh yeah, I remember her. God damn, she's hot. Look at her baking cookies. What a klutz. Holy fuck. That body. Perfect MILF bod. Unfortunately, uh, she belongs to her husband. Peak female, yeah. Time to roll up the sun and present it to her as a birthday gift. God. It's been a while. Don't you think we can have another Katamari Damacy game by now? Think how much shit we could roll up with PS5 technology. It, it felt like there were too many at the time, after like the fourth or fifth one. I can't remember how many we had on PS2. But I think it's time to go back to the formula. I would really appreciate a Katamari Damacy game in the year 2024. Like... Especially one that takes the full processing power of the PS5 into account. So you can just really, really roll. Like an, like an unlimited rolling mode. Where you can go from like tiny, like a tiny, tiny size in the room and just keep on rolling. And like go all the way to like the entire city. I feel like we could do that now with current technology. Katamari is how I imagine a cat sees the world. Everything uh, exists to be rolled up and destroyed. Yeah. The OFG director guy is making a game out of, about T-posing. He made uh, that Nobi Nobi game after that. But we all have to send him a letter and be like, We need you to make another Katamari game. Please, just one more. We, uh, we want you to come back. Katamari Damacy was a product of its time. It was made solely so Bandai could train new employees to the 3D software. Well, we need it now more than ever to come back and save us. It's time for you to, to come back and save the world by rolling it up. Alright guys, we have to get, put in some guests about this shit. Can we think of any fantasy games? What the fuck? This doesn't even look like fantasy over here. I have no fucking idea besides Spyro. Some Disney shit? That's a good guess. But uh, it looks like lo-fi uh, Kingdom Hearts or something. Fat Princess? It's not Fat Princess though. Fat Princess is isometric, isn't it? It's Yeah, it's too... Yeah, I don't know, man. Rainbow Cider PC D This is this is indie slop guys. It's not PS1. It's fucking indie slop. It's PC It's gonna be recent. It's indie slop pretending to be lo-fi low quality graphics, okay? So what the fuck is this shit? Oh god 
It's indie slop. Rainbow Unicorn game? Not, uh, rain mechanical rainbow, uh, attack. My favorite Adult Swim game. No, or, well, maybe you're right. Turbo Robot, is there, is there a Robot Unicorn game beat that wasn't the Adult Swim Auto Runner? There's no Robot Unicorn showing up. Disney Dreamlight Valley, oh God. No, they would, that would be on Wii or something. It's only on PC. Oh, Slime Rancher? We've had Slime Rancher. People guess Slime Rancher immediately. It says 10 hours, by the way. Anybody ever beat Robot Unicorn Attack? I was able to get to stage two. That's sarcasm. Ah, uh, well, let's try Slime something. It might be a Slime Rancher. It kind of does look like Slime Rancher. It's not. What the fuck is this thing? It is, this is the very definition of indie slop, guys. I think we're gonna lose. Nobody seems to have seen this shit. Yeah. No one even knows a, a vague idea of this thing. This is like Giga Indie Slop. Like we're gonna pretend like we're a PS1 game Indie Slop. It feels like the Rick and Morty creator made a game but we already just guessed that. I have no idea. Early access? Yeah, they have early access. That's a huge problem. We have one guess. Two guesses. They have early access all the time, unfortunately. Oh, 2008. But it's not rated. That's a bad sign. If your shit was released in 2008 and it's not relate rated... It's grim. Fuck this shit. Nobody cares about this fucking awful game. Spicy horse. It's not even rated. I don't even know if it's good or not. What the fuck? What kind of genre is it? Platform? Action adventure? Oh, I forget it. Next. I bet this game is incredible, BB. You don't know shit. American McGee made this. Did American McGee make it? American McGee should just, uh... Is this fucking Stellar Blade? What the fuck is this? This looks like Stellar Blade. Seaport. Stellar Blade with worse graphics. It looks like Crisis 3. Yeah, that's a good guess. 
It's not Destiny. We've had Destiny recently. Oh, Last of Us. I like the Last of Us guys. I kind of like the Last of Us guys. Seaport? I think Last of Us is better than uh, Crisis, maybe. There's, there's both a lot of this, like, uh, shrubbery in Last of Us and Crisis. Let's try two. I like Last of Us 2. The Last of Us Left Behind. Yeah, there we go. So, Kino. Greenery everywhere. Guys, remember, revenge is wrong. Hold on to the night. Be no The, the robot unicorn soundtrack isn't stopping, no matter if how much you ask. You're stuck in it with me. I'm still pissed. I haven't- I tried to finish one and I lost interest. I'm just not interested in the whole fucking narrative and Neil Druckmann core. I'm bored of zombies as a whole. And the end of society and shit. It's just- it just makes stuff less interesting to me, not more interesting. Next. Uh, speaking about the end of society, is this Metro? Or Stalker? This feels like, uh, Stalker. Stalker, guys? Stalker? Out near Chernobyl? Not Stalker? Isn't this Stalker 2? Isn't this like Stalker 2 with better graphics? Instead of the first Stalker? Metro is rarely outside when it looks- it looks fucking incredible. I've been bored of zombies since 2009? Yeah, me too. It's one. Stalker. Is it Stalker Sh Chernobyl something? Or is it S dot T dot... Shadow of Chernobyl is the second one, right? So it's, it's just Stalker? Which one of these is it? Double Steel. Is Shadow of Chernobyl the first one, and then they go Stalker for the second one? There we go. I know that with all the PC gamers in chat, we've all played Stalker. I have not played Stalker. I probably should. I definitely can on my laptop. There's no reason why I shouldn't. I don't know. I just like comfy places. And no place is comfier than uh, Chernobyl. Easy. When it's a famous game, when it's like the 4chan V-Core famous game, people guess it pretty immediately, whether it's Warcraft or Stalker or something like that. It has to be like weird-ass indie slop and then you don't know. High tier slob junk, yeah. Just makes me want to squat just looking at this shit. Good snuggler. Imagine the uh, the kisses. Give him a kiss, boys. When you're Hystrixia, you look at this and it's like so comfy. My ideal mate. Yeah, Hystrixia looks at Shadow of Chernobyl and is like, oh, this uh, radioactive wasteland, so dark and comfy, with hot guys. Next. Uh. Something knots. The uh, double fine knots. What else could this be? With teeth in the ceiling. Psychonauts 2, the teeth dream. Yeah, that's what I thought. Psychonauts. The second Psychonauts. Obviously, graphics aren't good enough for. Yeah, easy. Nothing else would have teeth in the ceiling, right? So. We're fucking on a row b roll, boys. One after the other. Just absolutely blasting through this shit. Um, Jump King? This doesn't look like NES. This looks like Jump King. Maybe not Jump King, though. 
But it looks like a recent PC game that wants to be an NES game. Or Blasphemous. Blasphemous has better graphics than this thing right here. This looks like shit. I'm gonna go Jump King. They've been doing a bunch of streamer core stuff recently. Tower of Duraga? Ooh. Okay, I just think it's recent. Gauntlet? I'm gonna go Jump King. No. Okay, it is old. Okay, I was wrong. Um, which old game is it? Tower of Duraga. I only know of Tower of Duraga because of there's porn. Oh, it's Gauntlet? Oh, the angle is Gauntlet. You're right. Tower of Duraga isn't uh, this isometric from the top, right? Yeah, there we go. Warrior. Valkyrie. Feels good, man. Next. Uh, is this Mortal Kombat? It looks like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's Mortal Kombat 1, right? With a K. Jesus Christ, we're just destroying this shit. The gamer power is too hard. Just like Goro's massive hard abs and cock. Sub-Zero! I said, uh, Robot Unicorn wasn't gonna go off, but... He's gonna see with you. Mortal Kombat! Next. Mortal Kombat! Fight. Fuck. Sucks, bro. Dragon's Dogma. It does kind of look like Dragon's Dogma, doesn't it? I think this is a... Well, actually, eh, I think I like that guess. This looks like a paved road, though. I'm back in the clubs hearing this. I bet the guys went wild when this shit showed up in the clubs. Jade. Sub Zero. Is this possibly Kingdom Come? I think the graphics are better for Kingdom Come. <laughs> Mortal Kombat! Let's try uh, Dragon's Dogma, actually. I kind of like the Dragon's Dogma, I guess. One. No. Desert. Car. No score. Recent game. Possibly early access. Indie slop. Why would it have no score? Is this like my summer car touring Beam NG? What the fuck even? I've never even heard of that. What's the actual title? It's not showing up. Beam. Beam NG dot drive. What the fuck? How did you guess this shit? Car simulator? What the fuck? Two thousand thirteen as Tecdobo, two thousand fifteen on Steam. The people who designed this shit are people who just are on Twitch for way too much time, and there are people who play too much unreleased indie slop. Okay, like for real. You said recent, and that's the only thing that made sense. Well, this does look like it has uh, realistic. Uh, holy fuck. That guy's dead. Okay, I'm changing my opinion on this as Indie Slop. I want to murder myself doing this shit. Oh. Please tell me there's a, uh, a mod for this that changes the crash test dummies into human beings that also have, like, physic parts 
and you can splatter all of their innards and skull everywhere by doing this shit. Because that would be the reason why I would play the game, you know? Mortal Kombat! Kino. Alright, next. Launch your car into the distance and hit a plane. Change it to cute anime girls who are being murdered, yes. Uh... What the fuck is this blue thing? Is this Devil May Cry? One? Remember there's a... Skelet dinosaur skeleton and Devil May Cry what what is this blue thing though? Killer Instinct? Yeah, it's not DMC. There isn't a I can't even figure out what this thing is right here. What the fuck is this? I mean the Killer Instinct guess kinda of feels pretty good. Looks like Riptor? Oh, you're right, it does look like Riptor. Alright, Killer Instinct it is. Yeah. But was there a... I don't think Riptor was blue, though. It's not Exoprimal, man. Exoprimal has the graphics and stuff. Seven day vortex forecast. Is it Exoprimal? That sounds like something that would show up in Exoprimal. It's Exoprimal? Okay, it's Exoprimal. <laughs> Everyone's favorite Cax Cap Capcom game, guys. We all love Exoprimal, don't we? Jesus Christ. I do uh, uh, like that Exoprimal is like a 360 game being released in 2023 or whatever, with like 68%. It definitely feels like we're going back to the 360 era with this game. It just looks like a massive mess of shit. Because if there's one thing that you think about when you think dinosaurs, it's like thousands and millions of dinosaurs coming out of the sky, right? It does look like a lot of fun that kind of got squandered because apparently the mission structure sucks ass and you can't play with the people you want to play with. But if they had done a little bit more playtesting before it came out, this is the kind of game that would be fun to play with friends and stuff. What the fuck is Exoprimal? You know how those games where you kill a bunch of zombies and stuff? Imagine if Capcom made one of those, except instead of zombies it was dinosaurs, and instead of just like being a guy with a gun you have like your super fucking mecha suit. The concept is Kino. Unfortunately the execution was probably pretty a little shitty, so... It d wouldn't allow you to uh, co-op with the people you wanted to co-op with. You had to be on, like, the same mission and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it didn't have enough content. But apparently when you got to, like, the end game content, it was actually a really good game. Exoprimal's biggest letdown was that it wasn't Dino Crisis. I just want to see Regina's leather-clad ass again, guys. For, you know, masturbatory purposes. That's all I have to say. Next. We've been doing this for a while. Um, Path of Exile? What the fuck? Diablo 4? This is like a TRPG that was released recently, wasn't it? Dirt? How descriptive? I don't know. I don't think it's... It's not New Vegas. Is that a car on the top left? Eh, it's hard to say. It could be a well. Wasn't there like a TRPG... Like Wasteland that wasn't Fallout? Something Outland, Wasteland. It's not Gears. We've guessed Gears like ten times already now. We've had like Gears 1, 2, and 3 I think by now. Wastelands. Something like Wastelands. Let's try Wastelands. Wasteland. 
Wasteland 2. It's not Wasteland. 82%. Uh, some kind of mech... Uh, is that this? This that Gearbox game that... Uh, huh. I don't think so. Warframe? I don't think it's... It's not Warframe. We've had Warframe before. Huh. Um. Mecha Cyberpunk Ragnar Rock video game. The fuck was it called? Nord. Dick Myth video game. Too Human, that's what I was thinking of. I played a little bit of Too Human. Not Too Human? Oh yeah, it's 86%, it's not Too Human. You're right. Too Human was just stuck in my brain for some reason. I played like about an hour and a half of Too Human because before I was like, this game fucking sucks. <laughs> It really did. It was a bad game. Infinity Blade? I don't think... Inf Wait. Wouldn't Infinity Blade be on Wii U or something? The graphics are too good for Wii U. Diablo 4? That's what I thought. Looking at this, this looks like Diablo 4. I think it's Diablo 4. Let's try Diablo 4. Let's try Diablo 4. Yeah, it is Diablo 4. I knew it was a a, a top-down isometric map, this thing, just looking at it. So I guess uh, maybe Diablo 4, but it wasn't. I didn't, uh, they didn't go stick to it. Is it Diablo 4 or 4? They give you the right answer, and what the fuck? How many ears do you need to unlock expanded storage or something? All right, one more. Last one after this. We've been going for quite a while now. Now this looks like Devil May Cry right here. This looks like Devil May Cry 3. I don't think it is, but... Doesn't it kind of look like Devil May Cry 3? I can't tell what I'm looking at though. Four hour stream, yeah, and very unproductive in terms of actually doing any drawings. I'm just not really in a drawing mood right now. I'm in a video gaming mood and chatting with chat mood. I just don't want to be drawing right now. That happens, you know. You have like, that's why it's hard to be a professional artist, right? You can't just be like, I'm not going to draw right now because I don't feel like it. So this shows, that's basically proof that I'm an amateur and that I can slack off when I don't feel like it and not get in trouble for my deadlines, for my corporate overlords. I'm going to try Devil May Cry 3. I don't think it is, but it kind of feels like that. Yeah, no. Um, who is this old guy? Do you take any days off? I always draw at least like one or two hours a day, but you know, you don't get credit for going to the office for two hours, right? That's not like a fucking real work day, so considering drawing is my hobby and my job, I should be capable of drawing. Oh, we finally get, did get Dante's Inferno. I should be capable of drawing like at least 50 hours a week, so if, uh, if I'm only drawing two hours in a day, like, you know, that ain't, that doesn't really cut it. I may as well be taking a day off. Dante's Inferno. Everyone's favorite hardcore game. Good job. We've been guessing Dante's Inferno for a while now and it finally showed up. I never played the game and I never planned to. But are there nipples? Or 
artificial mind and movement. Alright, one more. One more. That was a little too easy. I've been drawing a few hours every day for a while and I'm afraid to turn drawing into my, a job. It's not easy. Because your brain kind of gets tired. If, you, if you're working at the office, there's a lot of time in which you're not actually making progress. Is this like Ascreed Valhalla? What kind of fantasy landscape is this? Nipples with horrible bugs coming out. Tasty. You will eat the bugs. Huh. This feels like a Dragon Age. Oh, vampire. That's a good guess. I like the vampire guess. It's like run down in a weird way. I never have touched or looked at any vampire content, but I like the vampire guess. I like that. I'm gonna try that. Vampire. No E. Good job. That's a really good guess. The rundown, vaguely fantasy situation. Doctor. I've seen like... 20 minutes of vampire playtime by one streamer, and that's it. Dun, dun. Good job. From last cutscene. Vampire woman screenshot, come on. Boobs? No boobs. We've been failed. Where's the boobs? If it's a vampire game and a big titty vampire duchess doesn't show up wearing a corset with cleavage in these images, you have failed all of us. Alright guys, I'm going to end the stream here. See you around. Good night. Good night guys. Good night. <laughs>